ants digging a hole in the boy's neck, and lived inside him, to keep the class from finding out. Usually he had to use a band-aid to seal the hole. Because of the presence of these ants, Shinny's food intake increased greatly. He had to keep eating every day. At the same time, this gave Shinny great strength. Even the most ferocious insect beasts can be easily defeated. On this day, late at night, in an alley, two men trailing a sexy woman unhurriedly. Soon the girl was blocked in the corner. She could only cover her chest with her hands helplessly. Two men saw this with an obscene smile. But before the two men could extend their salty hands, there was a sudden sound of footsteps behind them. I saw the boy say indifferently, if you do not want to die, then hurry up and go. Seeing that the visitor was just a student, the two robbers suddenly looked fierce. You're the one who wants to die, right? The boy stopped paying attention to the two men. He tore off the band-aid he had put on his neck. The little hole in his neck actually burst out a few ants. Just as one of the robbers tried to come up and teach him a lesson, there was a sudden scream behind him. He turned around and found that his companion had only the lower half of his body left, and the upper half of his body was in a big writhing mouth. And look at the beautiful woman just now. At this point she has turned into a horrible monster. On the contrary, the boy has been wrapped in a layer of black fog all over his body. A closer look at this was a group of black ants. Early the next morning, the place was then blocked off by the relevant people. The leader was a long-haired man with glasses. They found the monster's body and the half-eaten body left here. It's hard to imagine who took out such a powerful monster. The only clue is the robber who escaped that night. He said a boy with a bug did it. These people who came to investigate were wearing the symbol of the insect beast reaper. This was a department set up by the government to deal with insect beasts and beasts. A few years ago, these insect beasts appeared out of nowhere. They mostly feed on people. The scariest thing is that these insect beasts can disguise themselves as humans. They live among us. In a schoolroom at this time, the class president was reading aloud from the reaper section. A boy with a band-aid on his neck keeps bringing food into his mouth. After the class leader Name reads out the content, the teacher on the stage told the students to be careful these days. Because the place where the accident happened last night is right next to the school. Hearing the teacher say that, Name looked at her friend in distress. The two of them decided to go home together after school. At the end of class, the teacher reminded Name to turn in her last assignment to the office. A sigh of relief came from the students' mouths as they listened, because not many people would finish their homework. After the teacher left, two students threatened Name not to collect homework, because it's impossible for anyone to complete such an assignment. But before the two finished speaking, a workbook was handed to the class president. It's Shinny with a band-aid on neck. But this also caused the two punks to get upset. They've had a problem with Shinny for a long time. Putting a band-aid on neck and playing it cool. Is that a strawberry mark left by your girlfriend? Name, who had a crush on Shinny, immediately stood up. Don't talk nonsense. The boys didn't react to seeing Shinny. So he reached down and tore off the band-aid on his neck. But they didn't see any hickeys. And they only saw a small spot. The boy thinks he's been tricked. Then he picked up Shinny by the collar and tried to teach him a lesson. But then an ant came out of the hole and crawled under his clothes and hid. This scene instantly scared the boy to the ground and he screamed. People just thought he was crazy and didn't take it seriously. At the end of the school day Name gave her and Shinny's homework to the teacher. They were the only ones in the class who finished their homework. The teacher's face immediately became gloomy when he learned of the situation. I don't know what he was muttering. While Name was wondering, the teacher looked up again with a smile. You and Shinny can go home after school. The rest of you stay and clean up the playground. Because of the strange events in the alley yesterday, Name was afraid to go home alone. Just saw Shinny who was applying a band-aid in front of her. Because the two live not far from each other. Name then invited him to go home with him. But Shinny said she had something to do today and refused Name's invitation. The two guys who were left to clean up kept complaining. Shurjan told them to cut the crap and finish the job and go home. Name had to wait here for Shurjan because there was no one else to go with. At that moment Shinny was sitting in the classroom and talking to herself. He seems to be communicating with the ants in this book about something. Two punks get ready to go after Shinny's trouble. While discussing what they saw yesterday about Shinny's ants, they walked towards the classroom. 
But just as they reached the corner, the short-haired man froze in his tracks. Because there was a huge monster blocking the way. The short-haired man's head was cut off by the monster before he could react. The girl let out a creepy scream as she looked at the object that rolled to her feet. The students were all fascinated by the girl's screams. And then the girl went crazy through the crowd. Run, everyone, there's a insect beast. The crowd turned around to find a giant spherical insect beast coming out. It was obviously too late to escape. By the time Name and Shurjin reacted, the bug beast was almost in front of them. The two men tried their best to escape. The four eyes behind him grabbed Shurjin in front of him in order to stay alive. She was then viciously yanked backwards. Shurjin loses focus, hit her head hard on a rock. Name rushed forward to help Shurjin up and found that she had passed out. And she herself could only watch in despair as the insect beast slowly approached. And the monster stopped next to Name, only to see the top of his head slowly split open. The teacher's face appeared inside. Didn't I kindly tell you to leave after school? Since you don't listen to your teachers either, you can go to hell just like them. With that, the monster raised his fist and slammed it into Name. And at that moment, a colony of ants is coming here at a great speed. The monster's two arms were instantly cut off. Nami looked behind him with a bewildered face. An armored warrior surrounded by a lot of black matter appeared in front of her. The warrior quickly caught Nami, who had fainted from the shock. The bug beast looked at his falling arm and didn't care, because he had heard of the existence of the fellow hunter black ants. He just couldn't understand why the black ants were protecting humans. Facing the monster's hiss, the black ant responds with a punch. This punch slammed the monster directly into the wall, blood spurting out of his mouth. The black ants took the opportunity to carry the two girls on their backs and put them in a safe place. Then come to the monster again. He said the reason he hunted his own kind was just to eat them. The insect beast was instantly furious, in that case. Then let me avenge the death of my compatriots. And the monster turned into a big ball, and then it shot at the black ants like a bullet. The black ant tried to fight it with strength, but was accidentally knocked away by the huge impact for several dozen meters. Looking at the black ants sitting on the ground, the monster wasn't going to let him go. The monster's legs slowly bent like a spring, then the body flew into the sky like a cannonball, aimed at the black ants below and smashed down heavily towards his body. The black ant was too late to dodge and was hit head on, spitting black blood. But it didn't end there. The monster continues to bounce away. A few more heavy blows to the black ant's body. By now, the black ant's limbs were completely twisted in the deep pit. He gave the ants the command to move despite the pain. At the same time, the monster's next attack was just around the corner. Only a loud bang was heard. The monster slammed down hard on the black ants. He thought this blow would be enough to smash the black ant into mush. But he didn't expect that not only was the black ant unharmed. Instead, his own body was pierced. The monster didn't understand what was going on. Black Ant gives the command again, convert. The armor that was wrapped around his feet slowly dissipated. The black matter slowly converged towards his arms. In the blink of an eye, a huge sharp claw appeared in front of him. At this point, the monster finally sensed the crisis, begging the black ant to let it go. But it's obviously too late to beg for mercy. He drove his claws directly into the monster's stomach. Then he lifted the monster above his head and slammed it into the ground. The monster regretted this moment. Obviously, I have heard of the black ant. Why do I still to mess with him? Without waiting for him to beg for mercy again, he was lifted into the air again by the black ants. And finally with a roar from the black ants, the monster's entire body became twisted. With a loud bang, the monster turned into a blood mist. As they left, the black ants gave the order again, eat it. The black substance that received the command left the black ant's body instantly. Shinny's figure slowly emerged. At this point Shinny didn't notice. This battle was watched by the humanoid insect beast behind him. Although he hit it well, but he was also investigated by the reapers. Just now, he took out a terrible bug beast on campus. Shinny let the ants inside her eat the corpse of the bug beast after. The reaper sector came here. Looking at the scene of the dilapidation, the two hunters couldn't help but feel, and in vain to prepare so long. Judging by the traces of the scene, it's easy to see that this was a battle between two insect beasts. But insect beasts basically don't kill each other. What exactly happened between them? 
At this point, the captain suddenly remembered something. The female bugbear that appeared in the alley two days ago, the only survivor said she was taken out by a black ant boy. Just then the staff informed the captain. The wounded man saved by the bug beast woke up. Soon the two came to Name's side. Name recounted the events of that time. It was a black armored man who saved her from herself. Are you sure it was a human who saved you? Name not sure. But the man in black was definitely different from the other bug beasts. Through a simple inquiry, the captain felt that the man in black should be acquainted with Name. So he asked Name, were there any students who were not present at that time? Name replied, there was indeed one. Shinny was the only one who got out of school on time. By this time, Shinny had already returned home. Grandma was the first to welcome her. Let him go over for dinner. Shinny was a little helpless to see such a rich food. Because he had just eaten a whole insect beast, he could only tell his grandmother that he had eaten. Grandma was shocked when she heard that. And then she immediately asked if Shinny was hurt. Shinny just felt that she had let down her grandmother. Grandma said as long as people are okay, get some rest. After watching Shinny walk into the room, Grandma couldn't hold it any longer. Tears flowed unconsciously. Why is my Shinny suffering like this? At this moment, the ants outside the window crawled into the window in an orderly manner. Shinny was lying quietly on the bed, listening to the reports of the daytime school bug beasts, letting those ants go one by one to the hole in the neck. In an abandoned construction site on the outskirts of the city, several soldiers came here looking for the missing child. The team leader carefully directed the group to climb the stairs. He couldn't help but be surprised when he saw what was going on in the room. A group of cocoon-like things were hanging in mid-air. At this point, another car arrived outside. Inside was the Reaper squad. The hedgehog in the driver's seat was waiting impatiently. I don't understand why the superiors sent those soldiers out. Beige on the other side comforted him. After all, their department is still reviewing. The police presence has priority in the investigation. Right at this moment, the car's communicator sounded a request for backup. Just now, the soldiers took the liberty of releasing the cocoons to save the children. The team leader's men opened the cocoons to see. There was indeed a child inside. The team rushed to open another cocoon. Just as he was getting confused, the head was instantly penetrated by something in this. A humanoid mosquito bug beast appeared in front of the crowd. Team leader looked at this insect beast and was slow to slow down. Another teammate hurriedly fired at the insect beastoid. But the insect beastoid disappeared in a flash. When he reappeared he had already penetrated the body of his teammate. The beast then immediately turned around and stabbed at the team leader again. Suddenly a gunshot interrupted the attack. The hard needle is also penetrated by the bullet. It turns out that on the distant towers, Beige had been waiting with a sniper rifle for a long time. But the bug was too fast. He missed the target. The attacked insect beast is extremely angry. Then he charged at the team leader again. But the hedgehog appeared just in time to block the bugbear's attack. And then he knocked the beast away with a stick. The insect beast was heavily set in the wall. The captain took this opportunity to have someone take the child and leave first. How can a bug beast give up its food so easily? He rushed towards the child in anger. The captain saw this and simply exhaled a soft puff of green smoke. The bug that smelled the cigarette instantly fell to the ground. Then the captain asked, What is your purpose in capturing these children? The bug beast yanked the needle off with one hand, saying that it was food prepared to destroy the black ants. The two men didn't quite understand what he was talking about. He took advantage of the two men's inattention. The beast spat some darts out of its mouth and shot at them. The captain spits out smoke again. The dart miraculously stopped in midair. The hedgehog also blocked the attack by waving his stick. The insect beast knew it was no match for the two, and took the opportunity to fly out the window. The captain saw this and quickly alerted Beige to snipe. But Beige fell to the ground after being hit by several darts due to his inexperience. The two people inside the house could only watch the insect beasts escape. On the other hand, Name was sitting on a chair in the park. Looking at the man with glasses being honored in the phone, she got very angry, because her best friend Shurjan was disfigured and lying in the hospital. It was because the man with glasses pulled her at the time. Suddenly a boy in a mask appeared. Name was taken aback, but then he was educated by Naime. The boy had to cry and go to his mother to complain. Why do I have such a naughty brother when I'm so ladylike? When Name turned around again and found that Shinny had somehow arrived, Shinny also noticed Name off to the side. So the three of them sat down and ate ice cream together. After eating the ice cream, the brother ran off to play with another child. The boy accidentally kicked the ball off the field. 
The brother said he would go with the boy to find the ball. Then he followed him through the broken hole in the barrier. Shinny seemed to sense something. Tell Name to wait here. Outside the containment grid, Shinny held down her brother who was climbing out. Shinny told him to go back to his sister. He himself was looking for something in the woods. He soon found another little boy with a soccer. The boy thought he had met his kind. So he kindly came forward to say hello. Shinny ignored the boy. Instead, he tore off the band-aid from his neck. At once, Densans crawled out of Shinny's body. The boy instantly looked shocked. Looking at Shinny, who was wrapped in black ants, he recognized it as a fellow hunter, the black ant. The boy crushed the soccer in his hand in anger. Then he accused the black ants of all kinds of crimes. How dare you, who violated the rules of insect beasts and beasts, lay hands on your own kind, I'll kill you. After saying that, the boy builds up his strength in place. The body instantly disappeared from the spot. Only the shattered mask remained. By now the boy had become a mosquito beast. Shinny was hit in the head when she was too late to dodge. The broken armor reveals the cold half of Shinny's face. The insect beast wounded the black ant with a single blow. He was inevitably a little proud. Looking at a motionless Shinny, the insect beasts were going back and forth around him, showing off his speed. Shinny, on the other hand, scratched his head with a bemused look. And then with one punch, he smashed the insect beast into the ground. Then Shinny came out of the jungle and came to Name's side. He told brother, the ball has been found, and people have been sent away. They didn't know that the insect beast was being slowly eaten by Shinny's ants. The boy had a hole dug in his neck by ants. He had to provide a lot of food for the ants every day, or else the ants would go crazy and bite inside him. The feeling was excruciating. Also the ants provided Shinny with great strength. Previously, due to the bug beast incident in Shinny's class, after a week of suspension, everyone went back to school again in separate classes. At this time, in the school classroom, the man with the glasses was still bragging about how brave he was at the time, forgetting that he was the one who dragged Shurjan into the abyss. Name on the other side wanted to go up and give him a kick. However, the girl sitting next to her couldn't stand it first. She stood up and kicked the man with glasses in the stomach. The man with the glasses was stunned by her action. At this point, the girl said viciously, You piece of garbage. It's too noisy. Name learned from all the chatter that the girl's name was in Hue. No one in the class dared to mess with her. Just as in Hue was about to go out, she was stopped in her tracks by an oncoming Shinny. The two were looking at each other. Both sides seemed to sense something. After a long time Shinny walked into the classroom first, he sat down next to Naime with his butt, and then while eating a snack and listening to each other talk about Anhue's cool behavior, suddenly Shinny sensed bug beast nearby. When Naime wanted to invite Shinny to dinner at noon, she found that he was long gone. By this time Shinny had already left the campus over the wall. On the other side two reapers were heading to the school. They couldn't find any sign of the mosquito beast anywhere. And at the same time there were no more disappearances of children. They didn't know that the mosquito beast had been eaten by Shinny. At that moment Shinny suddenly came out of the alley and ran right into the captain. Looking at Shinny's anxious face, the captain thought about it but didn't pursue it. The two then continued to walk towards the campus. In fact, the purpose of their trip was to find Shinny. When they found Name, Name told them that Shinny had just gone out. The two men also realized that the student they had just met was probably Shinny. So they pulled out a business card and handed it to Name, hoping that she would pass it on to Shinny, and then left the place in a hurry. At the same time, under a viaduct, a humanoid praying mantis clinging to a wall. He was in the dark, seemingly expecting someone to come. Soon a figure slowly appeared. The visitor was none other than the black ant. Shinny followed the scent and found this mantis beast, saw the target appear. The mantis also fell slowly from the wall, and then he waved to Shinny, as if to say, come on over. Shinny no bullshit. His legs suddenly went straight to the mantis, but Shinny's attack was not only easily deflected by mantis, his arm was also deformed by the scythe blow, and then mantis kicked Shinny hard in the chest with his back leg, not waiting for Shinny to stabilize herself. The mantis came at him again. He didn't know that this was a deliberate break put in by Shinny. A heavy punch to the face of mantis. The beaten mantis swayed itself like a puppet, very strange. Shinny was also a little confused by his movements. After careful observation, Shinny suddenly realized that his ants were hovering behind him. Someone must have been behind the mantis with a silk thread. To confirm his suspicions, he scattered some of the ants in his hands. And then he threw it hard at the mantis. The mantis is not moved by the flying ants. But these ants weren't meant to attack him. At this point, the ants were climbing up the silk thread. 
The manipulator can only cut the threads. And the mantis fell to the ground with the break of the thread. While she was looking at the thread in his hands in confusion, the body of the mantis moved again. His head suddenly slammed into Shinny. He then opened his mouth wide, revealing the bomb that was about to explode inside. The smoke from the explosion instantly drowned Shinny. Immediately afterwards, two bug beasts came out from behind the curtain. At this point Shinny was leaning hard against the wall. It's obvious that he's been hurt quite a bit. Shinny from the aura emanating from the two insect beasts. I'm afraid it's not going to be easy this time. One of the silk ants stepped forward and put a foot on Shinny's shoulder. We finally caught you. Don't you just love protecting humans? You also killed the mosquito beast, right? Shinny chose to remain silent in the face of her enemy's questioning. This time, the exploding ant beast also came over. And because of you we lost fresh meat. You must pay for this. And with that the exploding ant raised his arm and aimed it at Shinny. But the silkworm ants came out early. He kicked Shinny in the head. But he found out that Shinny's body wasn't inside. This is just an empty shell. The exploding ants suddenly warned him to be careful. It turns out that Shinny, who had shed her armor, had jumped on top of them, smashing hard at the head of the silk ants. After landing, start pushing hard on toes. The body quickly rushes towards the exploding ants. Shinny's movements are flowing in a single breath. The exploding ants are backing up. In the end, he couldn't withstand Shinny's attack and took a heavy punch. But the explosive ants also used their hind legs to shoot the cannonball at Shinny and it hit Shinny's body solidly. But the armor on his arm blocked most of the damage. Shinny knew he couldn't give him a chance to breathe, so he raised his fist again and swung it at the exploding ants. But just as his fist was a few centimeters away from the exploding ants, the arm got tangled up in some thin blue threads. He couldn't move forward anymore, so he was being controlled by the silk ants behind him, and then the silk ants jumped into midair. The body keeps spinning, pulling Shinny towards herself with a thin thread. A final super roundhouse kick to Shinny's head. Although Shinny blocked the blow with her armored arm, but the huge impact still caused blood to flow from his mouth and nose, and he flew out tens of meters. And finally, Shinny fell to her knees. Exploding ants took advantage of Shinny's temporary unconsciousness aiming the energy cannon in his hand at his head. Seeing that the charge is about to end, Shinny suddenly came to her senses. Feeling bad, Shinny immediately shouted at the armor's place, move. The black ants received Shinny's command to disintegrate quickly, subsequent disintegration into black matter, converging towards Shinny's place. But by this time, the explosion had already finished charging. He didn't hesitate to pull the trigger on Shinny's head. But the explosion was aimed at the top of the bridge above. It turned out that the hedgehog had come in time to change the trajectory of the shells with a stick in his hand. And afterwards he taunted. Are these the fireworks that were set off to greet me? Then he waved the stick in his hand to force back the enemy. Two insect beasts gathered together like a great enemy. Because the captain of the reaper squad also came here. Let me be your opponent. All of you trash. Explosive ants perceived this person is not simple. He pulled a ball out of the barrel. Two people saw the situation suddenly felt bad before the two men could react. Exploding ants slamming the ball into the ground. A large amount of smoke instantly enveloped several people. The silk ants took the opportunity to fly away dragging the exploding ants with them. The hedgehog couldn't help but complain, these flying insect beasts are disgusting. The captain froze in place with an embarrassed face. But it was good to catch the black ants. But just when the two went up to catch the black ant, they found that he was also missing. In the blink of an eye the night came. Shinny dragged her wounded body slowly towards home, holding onto the wall. The first thing he did when he got home was to ask his grandmother to prepare a table of food. Looking across at Shinny, who was covered in bruises, Grandma asked while she was in tears. Did you not eat anything today? Shinny didn't hide. I didn't catch any of them today. So I'm going to eat more even though he knows it doesn't really work. After eating Shinny returned to her room, the first thing he did was lock himself up. Then he began to hiss in a low voice, as if to meet a great pain. When he ripped off his shirt, his body was covered with dense red spots. These red dots are spreading at a rate visible to the naked eye. This is exactly why the ants inside him are eating his flesh and blood. Except for the insect beasts. Human food doesn't satisfy them. The mental and physical torture was extremely painful for Shinny. The boy's body is full of ants. To prevent these ants from running around, he had to seal the hole with a band-aid. Although the ants gave him superpowers. But the premise is to prepare insect beast for them as food every day. Just now. 
Shinny was ambushed by two advanced insect beasts while searching for insect beast, almost lost his life, although he ended up dragging his wounded body back home. But the ants that didn't get to eat insect beast tore wildly inside him. The mental and physical torture was killing Shinny. Meanwhile, in an abandoned factory building, a mysterious woman in a protective suit is dragging three body bags forward. She's putting the three body bags into the freezer compartment. Just as she was about to put the last one in, she noticed that the person in the bag was calling to her. But she put it in the freezer anyway. No matter how much the other side cried out, she still ruthlessly closed the hatch. Afterwards she went to the warehouse to remove her protective clothing. This is none other than Inhue, the cool guy from Shinny's class. Inhue is next to an old man. The old man was complaining. It was because of the Reaper squad that they didn't catch the Black Ant, causing failure to form an alliance with the Skyworm organization. As you can see here, they are the two insect beasts that fought with Shinny during the day. Then the old man said he wanted to increase the food reserves. But this was rejected by Inhue. She didn't like to do this kind of thing. But old man suddenly found. Inhue is wearing the same school uniform as Black Ant. Do you guys know each other? Inhue knocked off the old man's arm and hastily denied it. Old man said it's okay. As long as you two are in the same school, you have a chance to kill him. But Inhue refused again. That's not what she wanted to do. But before she could finish her sentence, old man grabbed Inhue's neck. He reminded Inhue that she had to kill the black ant if she wanted to cooperate with the Skybug organization. At this point, the sound of a dog barking outside suddenly attracted the attention of both men. Looking out the window, a man with a number on him is running out the door. Old man immediately pulled up the surveillance. He found out that the man had escaped from the freezer compartment. Old man looking back at Inhue. Did you forget to lock the door? Inhue stammered and replied, maybe. After hearing this, the right hand began to bug out and went towards Inhue. It's better if you tell the truth. Inhue saw the situation and immediately said she wanted to quit, ready to part ways with the old man. And she saw that the old man gently snapped his thumb on his index finger. Meanwhile the man fleeing outside the house stopped his body. A faint glow emanated from his chest. And then the man was drowned in the explosion. Then the old man raised his thumb again. The same glow appeared on Inhue's chest. The old man with a grin gazed and said, kill the black ant. This is in order. The next day at noon, Shinny ate in the cafeteria like a hungry ghost. Name next to her felt that Shinny was eating more than usual. Shinny was completely oblivious to the eyes of others, desperately trying to get food into her mouth. Suddenly his pupils contracted, and the spoon fell to the ground, because the ants inside him started to eat his flesh and blood again. Looking at Shinny's uncomfortable face, Name couldn't help but worry. And then the pesky glasses guy came over and messed up. Shinny, what's wrong with you? Are you a pig? One person eats that much. Name on the side trying to help Shinny out. He usually eats like 10 people. The average person can't eat 10 servings of food. Or are you not human in the first place? The people around also cast a strange look after hearing. Including Inhue, who came in behind. The man with the glasses doesn't realize the seriousness of the situation. Continuing the mad mockery of Shinny. He didn't know that Shinny was on the verge of going crazy. Just then. And another ant sank into Shinny's flesh. Shinny's body shook. Grabbed the chattering man with the glasses. Then like a chicken slowly carried him to the midair. Just as Shinny was about to finish off the glasses guy. Name behind him stopped him just in time. Shinny, who had regained her senses, threw him out. And left without looking back. In the blink of an eye, he ran to the top of the building. At this point, the ants in his body ran outward uncontrollably. Shinny hissed in pain. The converging ants form another head, trying to fight for control of Shinny's body. At this moment Huian, who was following him, suddenly appeared behind Shinny. Do you want everyone to know that you are black ant? She said she meant no harm while her body began to bestialize. Seeing a fully bestialized Huian, Shinny's hunger grew stronger and stronger. And then his body rushed uncontrollably towards Huian. And Huian put her hands together. Then several blue threads condensed in the hands. The two of them instantly wrestled with each other. The fight was on the verge of breaking out. The screen turns. Shinny slowly opened her eyes. Only to find his body crawling with ants. And the limbs were pulled firmly by four giant ants. Just as Shinny was hissing in pain. A much larger ant slowly appeared behind Shinny. The giant ant aimed its pincers at Shinny's head. Just as he was about to bite Shinny, a red ant came out of nowhere and saved Shinny. In a flash he destroyed all the black ant. 
When he woke up again, he found himself in bed, and the pain in his body was gone. All he remembers is meeting Inhue on the rooftop, who had turned into a silk ant. He learned from his grandmother that Inhue had carried him back last night. It looks like she's been hurt a lot too. Shinny was a little confused after hearing that. Why is Inhue still alive? Didn't my ants go quiet because they ate Inhue? Suddenly, Shinny became aware again of the presence of insects beast in the vicinity. The image of the old man came to mind. Can't hear what grandma's saying to him at all. Bad old man asked Inhue out on a date. Immediately blamed her for making a mess of things. Anhue said she did the best she could, but the bad old man wasn't satisfied. Let her take care of the black ant as soon as possible. Anhue was immediately furious at what she heard, that guy was a monster. If you can, you go. I don't want to die. Old man listened, the eyes showed fierce light. But just then, the sound of footsteps behind them interrupted their argument. A dark figure slowly emerged from under the bridge. It was the black ant who were following the scent. The two men were in a state of shock. Instant bestial mode. Don't let me down this time. As soon as the old man finished, Anhue took the lead and rushed up. Anhue lifted his right leg and kicked Shinny hard. But the blow was easily deflected by her opponent. Meanwhile, Shinny's ants quickly gathered in hands. A huge fist slammed down on Anhue's body. The power of this punch directly broke Anhue's armor. Anhue, who had been hit hard, realized clearly that this guy had gotten stronger again. But Shinny doesn't continue to attack Anhue, but instead went to the explod ant on the side. But Anhue suddenly grabbed Shinny's foot from behind. Are you taking pity on me? And then she shouted angrily at Shinny. If I can't even catch you, how can I take revenge on the Skyworm organization? At this point, the explod ant slowly raised their thumbs. Anhue, you really look like a poor bug now. Anhue panicked when she saw the explosive ants in action, shouting for him to stop. Explod Ant saw that Anhue had no use for him and told the truth. Do you think I'm really going to help you get revenge? I did everything so I could join the Skyworm organization. Anhue, knowing the truth, went on a rampage. I've done so many dirty things for you. In the end, I can only die unwillingly? Explod Ant don't want to listen to her crap, and then he was ready to press his thumb. But then Shinny suddenly disappeared from the spot. Explod Ant can't see Shinny's position at all. But then there was a sudden explosion next to Anhue. A black shadow instantly flashed by and ran quickly towards the Explod Ant. And the Explod Ant let out a scoff. You can't get out of my heat wave minefield. But soon he couldn't stop laughing. Because the impact of the explosion couldn't catch up with Shinny's speed. The Explod Ant saw the bad situation. Firing a cannonball at Shinny. But Shinny easily dodged his attack. Then the Explod Ant were ready to press their thumbs. He tried to attract Shinny's attention by detonating the bomb on Anhue's body. But before he could react, Shinny then grabbed his arm. And when he tried to press it, he found that his body was out of control. Because Shinny had taken off his head. When Anhue saw Shinny again, he found that he had evolved into a whole new form. Anhue was also shocked by how powerful Shinny was. The explod ant that had been suppressing her were thus taken care of by him. Shinny looked at his body and thought. He then gives the command to the ants, eat him. After saying that Shinny slowly regained his body, the ants that hadn't eaten the insect beast for two days started to gnaw on the corpses of the explod ant like crazy. Anhue's eyes were wide with fear at this cruel scene. At that moment Shinny also came to her side and looked at her indifferently. And Hue closed her eyes and waited for death to come. But Shinny didn't take a shot at her and passed right by her. And Hue, however, was not happy but angry. You guys, why don't you kill me? Do you want to fight the Skyworm organization as much as I do? Shinny stops and turns around and asks faintly. What misunderstanding did we have on the rooftop? And Hue was a little confused by the question. Did you really forget? At that time, the two were dueling on the rooftop. Shinny quickly knocked Anhue down. By now Shinny was frantically suppressing the black ant desire to feed, but it still broke free and rushed towards Anhue. And at this critical moment, Shinny caught the black ant by the neck just in time. Stop, this is not edible. It sees the mouth of food, cannot eat. Black ant turned his head in anger, and then opened its mouth at Shinny. Luckily, Anhue was able to control the black ant that was going to eat Shinny. But Anhue knew she wouldn't last long. Just then, one of the ants in Shinny's body mutated. With a scream from Shinny, the giant black ant disappeared instantly. Shinny also fainted unconscious. And just when Anhue was wondering whether to kill Shinny or not, 
She suddenly thought that this guy might be able to fight against the heavily bug organization. Shinny was then sent back home. After what just happened, Shinny was convinced of this. And Huei went on to try to bring him in to take on the Skyworm organization. You just took out the Explod Ant, so the supply chain of Skyworm's food reserves has been cut off. And when that happens, it's not just you. Your friends and family will be in danger. The odds are better if we both work together. Shinny steps forward and interrupts Inhuei's conversation. He then grabbed Inhuei with his ant-covered palm. You're just incapable and want to find a backer. But I'm not like you. As long as those guys come, I'll eat them all. After saying that, Shinny grabbed Inhuei's neck. Countless ants burrowed into Inhuei's mouth. After a long time Inhuei slowly opened his eyes. It turns out that Shinny was only doing this to help her get rid of the bomb in her body. The next day, the Reaper team sealed off the accident site. Just as the interns were picking up the prosthetic limbs left over from the Explod Ant, suddenly a small pill fell out of it. Before the intern could see what it was, and there's a strange person outside trying to break in. Long Hair saw this and hurriedly held the man down. He said to him to leave. But the man just gently raised his hand to cut off one of the arms of the long hair. Shaggy instantly let out a heartbreaking scream, realizing that there was something wrong with him. Everyone pulled out their weapons and got ready to fight. Not only was he not nervous, but he showed an excited expression. He killed a Reaper squad member with a single punch. In the blink of an eye, there was only this intern left. But he couldn't escape the clutches of the man in the end. Then the man picked up the capsule on the ground. Then he dialed a phone number. Sample recovery is complete. On closer inspection, the sample was a worm egg. On the other hand, Shinny was in class as usual. And Huei used the silk thread ability to shoot a note. The note flew past Name's eyes and landed in Shinny's hands. The note reads, meet me downstairs after class. Soon the two arrived, as promised. Seeing how mute Shinny was, and Huei couldn't help but tease. Is this your first time talking to a girl like this? Shinny didn't say anything. He asked him directly what the purpose of her visit was, and Huei just wanted to simply thank him for not killing her yesterday. Then invited Shinny again to fight against the Skyworm organization, but Shinny told her not to misunderstand. You're just my spare food. I could eat you at any time. After saying that, he was ready to tear off the band-aid, although and Huei was shaking with fear. But she still reminded Shinny. Did you forget what I said? You're already a target of the Skyworm organization. I'll help you. But Shinny didn't want to hear any more of her crap and just pushed her away. They didn't know. All this was watched by Name upstairs. She doesn't know when the two got together. The two seemed to be flirting in her eyes. This made Name more or less jealous. And look at the Reaper squad side to improve the survivability of the team. They developed mechs to deal with insects. And it was the hedgehog of the squad that was used as a test subject. For more accurate testing of mechs, the captain told the hedgehog that he could not use his own weapon. The hedgehog, who was used to using a long stick, saw the lightsaber now. He showed a face full of disgust. And at that moment the person he was fighting against came out on the other side. But the uncle looked sickly and seemed to have little strength. But when he heard that he could kill his opponent, he immediately got excited. In the blink of an eye, the uncle disappeared in the same place. Before the hedgehog had time to react. The uncle in the guise of insect beast had come up behind him. The hedgehog hurriedly blocked and used his strength to pull away. Seeing no substantial damage to himself, the hedgehog was pleased with the mech's defense. Insect beast, however, is now cruising around the hedgehog at 300 miles per hour. Seeing that the time was right, insect beast throws a punch at the hedgehog. Although the hedgehog blocked insect beast's terrifying blow, but the armor on his arm was also clearly cracked. But the hedgehog, with his years of combat experience, backhanded insect beast and slashed him. And then he delivers a heavy kick to pull away. But the arm of the mech was also broken. The insect beast saw this and charged at him again with excitement. By this time, the hedgehog had lost the ability to fight. He frantically asked for help from outside. But before he could finish his sentence, insect beast grabbed him by the neck. The hedgehog struggled desperately. Was he going to die in the lab? Suddenly. A tremendous electric current electrified insect beast and made him scream. He soon lost consciousness. It turns out that in a near-death situation the mech will send out 100,000 volts of electricity to attack the enemy. Afterwards the insect beast was again dragged away by the sleeve. As he was leaving, he turned around and taunted the hedgehog. Next time I will kill you. After the battle the captain also left the place. He came to the archives, where he found out about the leader of the Skyworm organization, Brad. 
This beautiful woman is not actually human. At this point she spits out a yellow worm egg in her mouth. And then she cupped Shurjan's chin. And then she put the eggs in her opponent's mouth. Shurjan was thus transformed into the ugly insect beast. She became a pawn of the insects. At this point, and Hue was working with Shinny. Finally revealing her true purpose. In fact, her target is not the Skyworm organization. But their leader Brad. Hearing the word Brad, Shinny suddenly became excited. Shinny's face was written with anger and resentment. Because Brad was the one who killed his mother. And he was also the one who broke up Anhui's family. On the very day when school was over, Anhui stalked Shinny again. But soon after they walked out of school, Shinny's familiar feeling came back. He looked carefully at the pedestrians around him, finally fixing his gaze on a couple. One of the men was a bug beast hiding among the humans. Anhui, who had finished buying ice cream, noticed Shinny's strange appearance. She learned from Shinny's mouth. The man in front is an insect beast. On the other hand Name came from school to visit Shurjin in the hospital. But Shurjin didn't want to be seen in her current state. And drove Name straight away. But just as Name was about to leave the hospital, a nurse passed by her. Name couldn't help but look twice at such a beautiful woman. Shortly afterwards Shurjin in the ward noticed someone coming in. She thought it was Name and immediately shouted a rebuke. But when this person came closer, it was the same nurse that had just been there. Do you want to be even more beautiful than before? I can help you. After that she spit out a yellow worm egg in her mouth. A closer look shows that this is the same one that the explod ant dropped. You want to take out the nasty ones too, don't you? I'll help you get your wish. And then the eggs were sent into Shurjan's mouth. Shurjan's body suddenly trembled. And the woman gloated at the change in her. A sharp pain suddenly came out of Shurjan's body. Causing her to roar out loud. Seeing Shurjan's face the woman also became very excited. On the other hand, the insect beast took the girl to the swimming pool and then kicked the girl into the pool while she was not prepared. When the girl resurfaced, there was no sign of her boyfriend. She didn't know that there were eyes underwater watching her. It was the boyfriend who had dived under the water at some point. At this time the man grinned. Then he suddenly grabbed the girl's foot and made a throwing motion with force. The girl's head hit the bottom of the water hard and lost consciousness. The man looked at the girl floating up and complained. It's such a pain in the ass to hunt every day. And then he opened his big mouth and he was ready to eat the girl. But just then an ant suddenly crawled on his face. The man then looked back at the glass. It turned out that Shinny, who had turned into a black ant, had arrived here at some point. Shinny smashed the glass with one punch. And then he leapt. A heavy kick to the man's stomach. This kick sent the man straight into the wall. But the man acted as if nothing had happened. And he got up and he hit Shinny back. Shinny took the punch solidly, taking advantage of the gap when Shinny was knocked away. And Hue has set up the net of heaven and earth, only to see several silkworms appear in front of the man. In a flash, he was wrapped into a dumpling. And Hue then pulled the girl out of the water again. It's a good thing the girl only fainted. It wasn't life-threatening. After settling the girl down, and Hue returned to Shinny's side. At this point, the man was not the least bit afraid and questioned why the two men were disturbing their kind to eat. You guys are really tired of living. Do you know who I am? Shinny says he doesn't care. You're just food to me. And just as Shinny was about to go up and eat him, and Hue stopped him, she thought she could get some clues from this person. And the man recognized Shinny. He was the fellow hunter Black Ant. I didn't know you had an accomplice, but you're not qualified to kill me. And with that the man began to bestialize, and Huei was very confident in her silk threads. But by this time, the man had also completely completed his bestialize, and the threads slowly split with the light. The aura emanating from the man made Shinny startled, get out of the way. But Shinny's warning was too late. Numerous blades of chi came out of the man's body, and Huei was too late to dodge and was hit in the shoulder. Shinny barely managed to block the blow with the hard armor of the black ant. In a flash, the entire room was left with deep grooves from the air blade. Then another voice came from their ears. You two might be able to bully a normal insect beast, but I am a member of the Skyworm organization. You guys are really not afraid of death. I'm Camel of the Skyworm organization. If you are not convinced, you can try again. The two men smell the words and prepare for battle. And then they pounced on Camel together. But their best moves were easily defeated by the enemy. Camel's hand slashed through the water leaving several streaks of shadow. Then he came behind the two people in a flash. 
Camel's hand sword emitted a sword aura that pierced the bodies of both men. The wounded Shinny could only let his body fall. Camel saw the right moment to aim his hand knife at the falling Shinny. Luckily, Anhui reacted in time and took the risk to save him. The two of them did not dare to be careless at this point. It was clear that this pool was Camel's home turf. Just get close and you'll be attacked. But while Anhui was trying to figure out what to do with this monster, but Shinny, who was on the other side, went straight up. Meanwhile, he reminds Anhui to cover the entire pool with your silk threads. Although Anhui doesn't quite understand, but did as Shinny asked. Using Anhui's silk thread as a relay point, Shinny darted towards Camel. He had to transform into a red ant again to have any chance of defeating him. Soon Shinny is in front of Camel, but did not wait for him to strike, but the enemy cut off a tentacle. Shinny immediately fights back, but it was easily dodged. And next Shinny's punches are getting faster and faster. The body began to gradually change color. With a lot of effort, he finally hit Camel in the face. Then another punch hit Camel's left arm, and then the right hand. Watching Camel's two weapons come out of his hands, Shinny wanted to take advantage of this opportunity to take out her opponent in one fell swoop. But a sword suddenly passed by him. It cut off his facial armor. At this point Camel not only has his leg fused with the hand sword he just dropped, both hands also draw two more powerful weapons behind him. This is my real strength. After all is said and done, he arrived behind Shinny in a flash. Shinny was also hit by Camel's cross slash. The armor broke instantly. Blood sprays out. Camille thought he had one, but found many blue threads wrapped around the weapon. And Hue suddenly appeared behind Camel. And with his hands he pulled the thread tightly while his knees hit the back of Camel's head hard. Although the blow destroyed the armor of Camel's face. But Anhui was also pierced by the sudden appearance of the light blade. Anhui continued to control the silk threads through the severe pain and threw Camel's knife into the air. Shinny seizes the opportunity to leap up and catch the sharp knife. Stabbed Camel hard in the chest. But it wasn't enough to kill the enemy. Only to see Camel swing another sharp knife at Shinny. Shinny had no way to escape and had to block the blow with her arm. And the blade was halfway into his arm. In a stalemate, Shinny sent a large number of ants crawling towards Camel's wound. Camel, who was being eaten by ants, let out a creepy scream. But just after killing Camel, another uninvited guest came. Shinny was just about to turn around and check the situation. And this man blasted him in the face. Shinny was slammed hard into the wall, apparently unconscious. And Hue was also lying on the surface of the water at some point. The man who came was the same fierce man who attacked the Reaper team earlier. He carried Camel and did not continue his attack on Shinny. Instead, he shoots a card at Shinny. The card says the sixth club. This woman spits out a yellow worm egg in her mouth and fed it to the girl across the room. Then the girl turned into the dreaded insect beast. Today was Shurjan's first hunt as an insect beast. The fresh meat across the street has been waiting here for a long time. Voir on Belfi come Shurjan. The fresh meat still looks shy. Beauty, I know a nice hotel nearby. Can I take you to a game? Shurjan heard a pout. Handsome, you are so bad. While talking Shurjan took off his mask. The fresh meat is suddenly a youthful flutter inside. Shurjan took the opportunity to stand on tiptoe and kiss him directly. This happiness came a little too suddenly. But the next moment the boy's eyes were wide open. At this point his skin was drying out rapidly at a rate visible to the naked eye. Until Shurjan sucked up every last drop before releasing him. The boy who had fallen to the ground was clearly not breathing. At that moment another beautiful woman came into the alley. She was the woman who fed Shurjan the warm eggs. She held Shurjan tight, as if to show that this is her plaything. Baby, how does it feel to be on your first hunt? It's not bad. It tastes beautiful. Meanwhile on a speeding subway, an uncle with a very unnatural expression was muttering something to himself. This drew strange looks from the crowd. At that moment, the uncle suddenly opened his mouth wide. The esophagus with sharp teeth inside was revealed. The few people in front of him are strung together like candy canes. This scene caused an immediate panic among the crowd. At this point, the uncle turned into the grim reaper and kept reaping the lives of the people in the car. It didn't take long for the carriage to stop screaming. Only the uncle was left writhing grotesquely. On the other hand Name was walking to school. Suddenly she noticed a familiar figure in front of her. It was her crush, Shinny. So Name rushed forward to say hello, good morning, Shinny, but when she saw Shinny's face, she was stunned. What's wrong with you? Shinny could only explain, 
it's from fighting with other people. He couldn't tell her that he was beaten up by insect beast yesterday, right? Just after returning to class, Name saw a dazed Shurjin. Name was so happy that she jumped right at her, seeing her best friend recover. Name was so excited that she shed tears. I didn't see you at the hospital last time. Do you know how worried I was? Sorry, Name. I didn't want people to see my hair the way it is now. The two of them were talking and laughing as if they were back in the beginning again. But suddenly an unexpected visitor interrupted their conversation. The person who came is the glasses guy who victimized Shurjin. Not only did he not feel sorry for Shurjin at this point, and he kept mocking Shurjin's scars for being so disgusting. The head is so ugly. This instantly made Shurjin furious. She wanted to eat him alive right now. But before she could do anything, Name aside punched the glasses guy first. Name, who was always so gentle, just yelled at glasses guy. If it weren't for your greed for life and death, will Shurjin become what he is now? Because of Name's help. This tempered Shurjin's anger. Glasses guy said he was sorry though, but there was clearly some resentment inside. You guys wait for me. Shinny also sensed the difference in Shurjin's anger just then. This is clearly not a human scent. On the other side of the train, the murderous uncle had completely transformed into a giant fleshworm. At this point the man with the reaper logo on his clothes walked into the carriage. This man was the brother of the Ripper team, Jack. And walking in the front door is the older brother Jesse. Their arrival immediately caused Insect Beast's displeasure. The two men blocked Insect Beast in the middle. The doctor told us to take this back for research. Be careful not to break it. This statement instantly angered the giant bug. And it opened its mouth at Jack. But before he could cry out, Jack stabbed him in the body. And a few more rounds. Didn't I warn you not to break it? But before Jesse could finish his sentence he was knocked aside by the giant bug with his tail. No way, brother, are you dead? An insect beast take this opportunity to use the tail to press Jack hard. I can't be overwhelmed with this power alone. You're not even close to my big brother. After saying that, the whole giant worm was lifted into the air by him. Jesse took advantage of the opportunity to slash. Cut the giant insect in half. Just as the two were about to pack up the giant worm and take it away. A miniature worm crawls out of the giant worm's corpse. The little worm looks up at Jesse. Then its body shot into his head like a bullet. Looking at his brother whose body was shaking, Jack hurriedly asked, What's wrong with you? The next second he acted as if nothing had happened. But there's something strange swimming around inside his head. The girl was fed a worm egg. And she turned into a horrible insect beast. After feeding on the essence of a boy, she went back to school acting like nothing happened. After school a few people were going to go eat kimchi together. But halfway there, Shurjin got a text message. She then made the excuse that she had to leave first. Name reluctantly said that it was okay to make another appointment tomorrow. But when Shurjin left, Shinny stared at her back and thought. And then he and Name were both ready to go home together. But then she suddenly remembered that Shurjin's homework was still in her school bag. The teacher is going to check the homework tomorrow. And she said goodbye to Shinny and had to deliver the homework to Shurjin. But suddenly Shinny took her hand. It's dangerous, don't go. Shinny's words left Name a little dazed. I mean, Shurjin had just been discharged from the hospital. The teacher will understand. On the other hand Shurjin met the person who sent her the message. She licked her lips as if she had seen her prey. Then she got into the man's car. This scene was watched by the glasses guy not far away. The two of them look like they're not in a normal relationship. Then glasses guy gave a playful smile. And Huwei has been resting at home since his last injury. For to find out the leader of the Skyworm organization Brad, she decided to do something about it. By the end of the night, and Huey walking around the night market in a cool costume. She never thought the address on the red card was a nightclub. Looking at the long line at the door, she could tell that this place was extremely hot. She wanted to contact Shinny to investigate, but was refused. And just when she was annoyed by that, a man suddenly appeared behind her and called out to her. Beauty, are you alone? I feel familiar with your back. And Huey also felt that this person's voice sounded like he had heard it somewhere before. So she turned her head curiously and found out that this was the same person he was fighting with Shinny, Camille the Green Steel Shadow. And Huey followed him into the nightclub and found the place very lively. All young and beautiful women. Not a bad atmosphere. But and Huey knew that there was more to this place than meets the eye. So she took out the red card in front of her chest. I was invited to come. You're not just going to show me this stuff are you? Camille saw the card as if she had expected it. In that case I'll show you something exciting. 
The two walk through the corridor to an elevator entrance. The red card is what is used to start the elevator, and only VIP customers can have such cards. Shortly afterwards the elevator doors slowly opened, and Huei was even more shocked by the situation inside, because the insect beast and the humans here were mixed together. Under the stands is a rectangular coliseum. The human and the insect beast were fighting each other on the field. The audience on the stage shouted desperately. Soon the insect beast was killed. Death at the hands of several humans. Yet just then, another giant insect beast appeared in front of the crowd. The beast roared with horror. Then it lifted its leg and trampled several humans into the ground. Looking at the humans and insect beast cheering together on the stage. And Huei couldn't understand why the two races could be mixed together here. Camille seems to see in Huei's confusion. You know too little about humans. They will do anything to gain power and wealth. After saying, the huge insect beast on the field was penetrated through the body. It turned out that a red insect beast had sneaked up on the giant bug from behind. And Huei doesn't understand what the point of such violence is. Camille explains, this will not only give pleasure and excitement. The most important thing is the opportunity to become a member of the Skyworm organization. And with that Camille took out a yellow bug egg. Asked in Huei if she was interested in trying it out. And Huei accepted his offer. Just as she was looking at the eggs and asking how to use them, Camille is called by another insect beast that arrives. Camille, the boss has been waiting for you in the private room for a long time. Camille turns around. He was thinking of asking Inhue to wait here for a while, but Inhue used her stomachache as an excuse to get on the elevator to leave. It wasn't until the elevator doors closed that Inhue's heart dropped. Damn Shani, stood me up. At this point insect beast reminds him again, but the impatient Camille cut off his head and shrugged it off with disgust. The next morning, Anhue arrived at school. She was very angry at the leisurely Shani. So she kicked at Shani, and then she said as she hit, Do you know what I went through yesterday? After learning that Anhue had obtained useful information, Shani gave her a thumbs up. At this point, the classroom was whispering about something. When they saw Shurjan enter the classroom, the chatter seemed to get louder. Everyone gave her a look of disgust, listening to the obscenities of her classmates. Name questioned, what are you talking about? At this point, the annoying glasses guy came out again. He said he had posted the filmed news to the campus network. And with that he handed the video that he had taken to the two men. It shows Shurjan and an older man walking into a hotel. And then the glasses guy makes a puke face. You found this shortcut because you couldn't make it as an idle trainee, right? See the glasses guy look. And Hue wanted to go up and give him a kick in the pants again. At this point Shinny felt that familiar scent again. And this time there was definitely danger. Name was also very angry at this point. Finally she couldn't control herself and swung her fist at the glasses guy again. But was stopped by Shurjan. Name, thank you. You'll always be my best friend. After saying that, she pushed her hands together and let me work it out myself this time. Name was pushed out the door by her. Glasses guy didn't know the danger was coming. And he keeps mocking Shurjan. I didn't expect Shurjan to laugh like crazy after hearing that. I was hoping to keep you alive for a while. But since you're looking for death, the two men who didn't know what they were doing didn't even notice the danger. One of them even boldly went forward and asked, How much can you make at a time? I've saved up a lot of money from delivery, see if you can. But before he could finish his sentence, he then noticed the exposed tendons on her neck. At that moment Shurjan suddenly turned his head. Five big scary eyes staring at him in unison. Insulted again, Shurjan stopped hiding, exposing his true face directly in front of her classmates. The boy who was just flirting with Shurjan's voice stopped abruptly. Shinian and Hue, who were on the sidelines, were shocked to see her. Shurjan stared angrily at the boy in front of him. Then with a casual punch, he was sent flying. The others saw this and ran frantically for the door. And Shurjan slowly raised his hand. Suddenly her arm stretched out several meters like Luffy's, directly blocking the way of her classmate. The wooden door was also inserted by the stool and could not be opened. Heard noises of chaos inside. Name couldn't help but feel confused. The table and chairs in the room blocked the other door tightly as well. And Hue tried to transform but was stopped by Shinny. Because it's so obvious here. Shurjan saw glasses who took out his cell phone and tried to call the police. She yelled, get your ass over here. Glasses was so scared that he hid in the crowd and didn't dare make a sound. The students all took a step backwards at the sight of this, leaving Glasses himself in place. Shurjan extends his arm again and grabs Glasses by the neck. This is all your fault. 
Why do you trample on my dreams? Make me become like this. Shurjan opened his mouth wide. The fanged esophagus was revealed inside. In the next second, the esophagus was in front of Glass's face. Just as she was about to eat Glass's, a sudden scolding stopped Shurjan from attacking. At this moment Shinny came out of the crowd, kindly persuaded Shurjan to stop. If you kill Glasses now, what will Name think when he sees it? Aren't you his best friend? At that moment, Name's knock came from the door. Shurjan, are you okay? Open the door. Glasses thought it was too late to beg for mercy at this point, so he shouted frantically at his classmates again. You guys hurry up and contact the Reaper department for me. But who would want to be the bird in the head at this time? This caused Glasses to scold the crowd. Everyone just looked at him coldly and didn't want to help him. At this point, Shurjan suddenly called out to Shinny, please give me a moment. Please don't ask for support yet. And with that she pressed Glasses hard against the wall. You listen to me. You brought this on yourself. Shurjan reached into his book bag, and then she pulled out a handful of yellow eggs inside, and then she opened Glass's mouth. Killing you directly will not solve my hatred. I'll make you feel the same pain I feel now. Glasses knew that what Shurjan was holding was definitely not good, but no matter how much he struggled, his mouth opened wider and wider. In the end, he could only watch as the eggs fell into his mouth. Glasses, who swallowed the eggs, immediately reacted. His body continued to twist and turn. His clothes were slowly bursting, and the neck is getting longer and longer. The face also changed at a rate visible to the naked eye. At this point in Huey suddenly remembered something. The eggs that Glasses just ate were the same kind that Camille gave her. Looking at Glasses again, he's completely transformed into an ugly insect beast. He tried to call for help but only let out a strange hiss. Shurjan on the other side was satisfied with this performance. Now you can understand my feelings. At that moment there was a knock at the door again. It turned out that Name was worried about Shurjan and had called the class teacher. Finally, Shurjan asked Shini. Take care of Name for me. She and I won't see each other anymore. I hate humans now. After saying that her body leans backwards. Escaping from the place that broke her heart. On the other side, the classroom door was kicked open by force. The teacher came in cursing and swearing. Immediately shut up when he saw Insect Beast in the classroom. The boy who had been knocked unconscious by Shurjan slowly woke up. He mistook the Insect Beast in front of him for Shurjan. Then he took out his cell phone and called the Reaper department in a hurry. Name believed in it. But in order to protect Shurjan, she immediately grabbed his opponent's cell phone. But the phone slipped during the struggle between the two. It landed right in front of Insect Beast. At this point, the voice of the harvesting department came over the phone. Do you need any help? Glasses was going to come up and ask for help. But all that came out of his mouth was an O sound. To find out what's going on, he turned his head to look at the glass behind him. Then he found himself turned into Insect Beast. Glasses smashes the glass in front of him in anger. For not being able to accept reality, he waved his two tails wildly. And Hue's quick hands saved a girl. And the other tail came to Name's side. In the nick of time, Shani leapt up and took Name in her arms. At this point Glasses let out a roar of resignation. But to save his life he had to break the window and leave. After landing, he darted off into the distance in a strange position. Shinny, on the other hand, glanced towards Inhue. And Hue nodded his head to indicate that he understood. And then the two of them started tracking. And Hue said that Shurjan must be connected to the Skyworm organization. Because the eggs she just took out are the same as the ones in Club 6. Shinny left ants on Shurjan's body to mark it. The two men flew after Shurjan. Soon the two chased each other under a bridge. Shurjan was found alone in front, wiping his tears. Shurjan also sensed that someone was coming. We need to talk to you. Please talk to us. But they just finished. The two men were shocked by what was happening in front of them and their eyes were wide open. So Shurjan wasn't alone here. Only another figure was slowly emerging. What I hate most is when people mess with my stuff. So whoever you are, it's gonna be hard to get out of here alive today. After saying, Hannah's figure is miraculously disappearing. Shinny felt that something was wrong. He hastily pulled Inhue aside. He himself resisted a heavy kick from Hannah. While kicking Shinny away, Hannah raises her fist and attacks Inhue again. But that was just her feint. Suddenly she dodged in front of Inhue. You're a good looking chick. And the next second, she came behind her. I can't bear to kill you. And then she bit Inhue's little ear. Purple blood flowed from her mouth. 
and Hue then swung his fist and knocked her back. Hannah wipes the blood from the corner of her mouth. So you're insect beast, too. It's a shame, and Hue is totally pissed off. She attacked Hannah directly as insect beast, so it's a silkworm moth. But your attack is too slow. Thinking about it Hannah couldn't help but look at Shinny. So he must be insect beast too. Sure enough. At this point Shinny has insectified and is coming at her with her fists. But again, Hannah's ghostly stance easily dodged. You can't hit me with this attack. My ability is not only stealth. I can also sense your attacks in advance. Shurjan at this point was also incredibly shocked, because it was only then that she realized that Shinny and the others were insect beast. This is not the first time the two have worked together. Quickly figured out the response. Shinny once again swung at Hannah. Hannah, who was trying to avoid it, got a sudden stinging pain in her neck, and Huei had already set up a net around her. But this also managed to piss off Hannah. You dare to touch me? You're dead. Shinny didn't pay any attention to her threats. He punched Hannah hard in the face. This punch caused Hannah to spit out a mouthful of blood. At the same time, Hannah grows a spiky bone spike on her arm. How dare you make me bleed. And with that she stabbed Shinny in the chest. And the bone spike was still absorbing Shinny's blood. But Hannah was particularly surprised to see that. Why is your blood red? Seeing Shinny injured. And Hue was coming this way very fast. Hannah looked coldly at the other side. Slowly raising her left hand to her. Then the bone spikes in her left hand suddenly reached out several meters and stabbed in Huey in the shoulder. Hannah pulled out the bone spike. And Huey said that the attack just felt like a tickle. Then rushed towards Hannah again. Hannah was calmly licking the blood from her body. Then, Shinny and then Huey's wounded area began to swell. With two explosions afterwards, two people were obviously seriously injured. I'm just warming up and you two can't do it? And so Hannah raised her arms and prepared to kill them. But just at that moment, Shurjan suddenly appeared in front of the two. She stated, this is my client. I asked them to come here to trade worm eggs. Are you telling the truth? Do you know the consequences of lying to me? Hannah immediately changed her face after getting an affirmative answer from Shurjan. So we are our own people now. Almost got you guys killed. But I only have one worm egg on me. Which one of you will use it first? Shinny says we don't need it right away. You start by describing what the worm eggs do. Don't you know? This thing insect beast will increase some of its strength if you eat it directly. If a normal person eats it, it will turn into a larva like Shurjan. If you eat the larvae again, you will get double the benefit. The two men were shocked at what they heard. Isn't that the same as eating people directly? But just then, two unlucky runners passing by. Hannah says she'll show you once and you'll understand everything. So she called off the two youths. Before one of them could react, stuffed the eggs directly into the mouth of the other one. Soon the boy's body began to change. The next second it became an ugly larva. Although having just experienced this once. But the two were still in shock. I'll give you this as a gift. Just eat it and you'll get stronger. Take your time and enjoy. If you need me again, come see me at Club 6. After Hannah left. The larvae set their sights on his partner. But the incoming Shinny knocked him away with a punch. And then he put his hands together. Punch after punch on the larva's head. And Huwei behind him tells Shinny to stop. But Shinny told her to shut up. Seeing Shinny's next move. And Huwei rushed forward to stop it. You're not really going to eat him, are you? He was human just now. But Shinny still looked bored after hearing that. Don't stop me from testing. Eat it. A command. All the black ants converge on the larval corpse. Shinny is watching all this coldly. But at the same time, it made in Huey completely disappointed in Shinny. Do you know that this is no different than cannibalism? Why do you have to go to this extent? What's the difference between you doing this and those people in the Skyworm organization? I was blind to work with you. Shinny just glanced at her when she heard that. You take a good look at that. At this time, the larvae on the ground is rapidly changing. In the blink of an eye it took on a hint of human appearance. This was all expected by Shinny. And Hue curiously asked what this was all about. Before Shinny noticed that there was something wrong with Shurjan, he started to study. Now I can only test to see if it works. Just finished. The man on the ground opened his mouth wide in pain. The eggs he had just eaten were dragged out by ants. This thing is the culprit that turns people into insects and animals. Watching the ants keep eating the eggs on the ground. And Hue was worried for Shinny. Will these things affect you if the ants eat them? I'm not sure. I will know when they are back in my body. 
Soon the eggs on the ground were eaten up, and when they returned to Shani's body, Shani immediately sensed that something was wrong. Seeing Shani in pain and Hui was also very worried. Are you okay? Shani suddenly turned around and shouted at Anhui after hearing that. Get away from me now. With the return of the ants, the veins on Shani's neck were sticking out. These ants seemed to be trying to break free from Shani's control. This couldn't help but cause Shani to hiss in pain. This boy's body is full of ants. To keep these ants from running around, usually he has to seal the little holes with band-aids. This day he let the ants eat one of the larvae. Just as the ants finished eating and returned to their bodies, Shani's body changed. These ants seemed to be trying to break free from Shani's control, making him suffer. On the other hand Hannah took Shurjin back to the club. The owner here is none other than the fierce man Kong Dajuan. He noticed that Hannah's arm was bandaged, so he asked her if something had happened. Hannah said that she just had a misunderstanding with the client. And what is the purpose of you getting me here? Dajuan says the club lost 50 pills yesterday. Do you know what's going on? Hannah said this can only be blamed on your poor guarding. Shurjin on the other side was silent. At this point Kong Dajuan stood up. The next second he disappeared from the spot. When he reappeared, he had Shurjin pinned to the wall. You have a lot of nerve, you little girl. How dare you steal my medicine? At this point Kong Dajuan was furious. He threatened to eat Shurjin now. But suddenly a golden needle was placed against his neck. Two insect girls saw this and rushed forward to protect their master. They put a hand knife to Hannah's neck. But Hannah didn't panic at all. She threatens Kong Dajuan, you touch her and you're dead. Dajuan just smiled slightly at that, continuing to ask about the whereabouts of the pills, and increased the strength of the hand. And without hesitation, Hannah stabbed the golden needle into Dajuan's neck. She seemed to really care about Shurjin getting hurt, but she couldn't stop this crazy man at all. The unbearable Shurjin finally admitted that she had taken the drugs, but I'm just trying to get revenge. Dajuan finally smiled with satisfaction when he heard that. In fact, I already knew that you took the medicine and I know what you used it for. After that he put down Shurjin. Hannah rushed to Shurjin's side and asked her about her injuries. Dajuan, who was next to the wall, was laughing wildly. You little girl, how did you get such a brilliant idea? You're going to see your old classmates soon, they're on their way. The guy who took 50 pills, what happens to it if I eat it? And Glasses, who had become insect beast, was fleeing like crazy. Several combatants from the Reaper sector followed close behind. Soon they caught up with glasses. All kinds of weapons were being thrown at him. He tried to beg for mercy but could only let out a helpless hiss. As the captain's blade cut out, glasses also finally lost his resistance. Afterwards, the captain instructed the crowd to retrieve the body. But just then the ground suddenly shook. The captain turned around at the sound. He found the bodies of the team members were stuck in the mud. And two unfamiliar figures appeared ahead. At this point the captain saw that they were coming from a bad place so he asked them who they were. But Camille did not pay attention to this person, but asked a child to take the body away. But the child disagreed, because he wanted to kill the humans in front of him. As he speaks, the mud controlled by the child is about to swallow two of the reapers. And the captain not only didn't attack, but also thrust back his long sword, and even smoked a cigarette at leisure. This scene not only made the enemy on the other side look silly, the team was also unable to understand the captain's intentions. The captain said calmly, I was thinking about this body. Why are you guys making such a big deal about trying to get it? No one noticed that the red mark on his scabbard turned green. Your teammates are dying and you're still thinking about such insipid questions. Do you really want to see them lose their lives? The captain sniffed and finally raised his weapon to the enemy. The kid was a little confused by this. Can you attack us from such a distance? Camille was just about to warn him to be careful when he was struck by a green bolt of electricity. Watching his companion fall in front of him, angry Camille instantly opened the insectization. You vile human. At this point, the captain was not idle. He once again built up his strength and shot electricity at his opponent. Camel saw this and waved his hand sword. He thought he had successfully blocked the blow. But the next second he was shocked. Is this thing going to be useless even if it's blocked? The team took this opportunity to scramble upwards. The captain suddenly disappeared in one leap. While rushing towards Camille, he told the team to make sure to retrieve the torso and not to let the enemy get it. After saying that the two men's weapons collided, just this one blow, the captain knew this was definitely a dangerous guy. Camille also drew his other longsword behind him, but the two were on par with each other. No one can beat the other in a short time. 
Camille doesn't want to waste time, and he swung his sword directly at the captain with all his might, feeling the powerful attack of the opponent. The captain was in a cold sweat. The captain smoked the whole cigarette, and then exhaled the smoke and enveloped Camille in it. And Camille is full of disdain for this, and the smoke was dispelled with a single swing of the sword. However, the captain was also missing. The sudden sound of electricity behind him aroused his alarm, but just when he turned around to check the situation, he was struck by the captain with a vicious slash, but the good thing is to avoid the fatal attack. The captain again asked them what their intention was to obtain the body, but then the vibration came again from underneath the feet. Sensing danger, the captain leapt backwards, but that's what the thing below was waiting for, so he can't hide. Luckily, his teammates came and blocked the dangerous blow. But then there was a red spike in the ground. It went straight through a teammate's body. And that's when it became clear that this was the esophagus with the fangs. Without waiting for a few people to react, the bald head was thrown into midair. Then he was sent into the mud again. Camille then realized that the child had been playing dead. At this point the boy, completely animalized, slowly emerged from the ground. He should be insect beast of serambicity and the bald head slowly emerged in front of the crowd. The two men immediately decided not to play. Take the body first. Then the kid sinks glasses into the mud. Camille tells the kid to take the body back to the club first. He came to stop them. Club? This is the only information the captain got today. Seeing that they are going to escape, the captain raised his weapon again and aimed it at them. But by this time, the scabbard had run out of power. At this point, the surrounding buildings began to shake continuously, then started to collapse. The team rushed to tell the captain to retreat. The captain told them to go first, and he rushed toward the center of the collapse. And soon he stepped on the rocks and came to Camille. Camille was ready to fight. Unexpectedly, the captain just wanted to save his teammates. Looking at the sinking enemy, there was nothing the captain could do. He had to evacuate the area with his teammates. But next he wants to investigate the clubs in the area. Now it's our turn to hunt. A black ant riding on a yellow insect beast. A closer look. They're not breeding offspring. Instead, the black ants are gnawing on each other's flesh and blood. Shinny was watching silently. Since the last time I ate that bug egg, Shinny noticed that the number of ants in his body had increased. Because of the limited capacity of the body vessel, he split this strange black ant. After several fusions, it eventually failed. Only one ant captain can be sent to control this black monster. At this point the black ant finished feeding and stood up. He came to Shinny and said I'm still hungry. And after that he opened his bloody mouth to Shinny. Shinny punched him through the head. The ant captain that was sent out appeared to Shinny. The ants that were scattered also all fused in. But just then, Shinny felt insect beast's breath again, and the target was not far away under the bridge. To test the strength of the present, Shinny decided to go and meet them. But just as he was rushing toward the insect beasts, and suddenly he noticed that an insect beast's breath had disappeared. Soon Shinny arrived near the bridge. Then he hid his breath and looked inside the cave. He found the body of an insect beast lying at the feet of a rhinoceros beast. The murderer is none other than the red insect beast across the street. Because the club has too many rules, I'll just have to call you guys out for practice. And with that he took up his fighting stance again. The rhinoceros beast was furious at hearing this. Just for practicing killing my companion? Only to see his hind legs stir. And his body rushed towards the ladybug like a cannonball. The ladybug dodged the blow with a small move. The rhinoceros beast uses the wall as a borrowing point. Turning around and charging again. The ladybug chooses to fight head on this time. He clenched his powerful fist. After dodging the rhinoceros beast's impact a backhand punch pierced his body. The rhinoceros was finally killed. At this point the ladybug shakes the blood stains off his hands. He turned his head expressionlessly and said, Can the guy hiding in the shadows watching the battle come out now? Even if he doesn't say anything, Shinny will come out. Because the reason he came here was to test his current strength. It's not hard to find. At this point Shinny's armor is more imposing than before. After two people have watched for a long time, the ladybug attacked first. Shinny did not choose to dodge but resisted the punch. The ladybug was surprised because his fist was bitten by another ant that suddenly appeared. The ladybug beast, who had never seen this before, immediately drew back. You scared the hell out of me. What kind of monster are you? My name is Black Ant. This should be the last name you hear before you die. The ladybug beast became more excited after hearing it. The accident had just aroused his warlike spirit. He again swung his fist at Shinny. 
but a few dozen punches in a row, he didn't even touch Shinny, and Shinny didn't fight back. This made the ladybug beast a little bit annoyed. Are you here to tease me? Another heavy-handed attack ensued, and Shinny, after dodging this attack, finally clenches her fist and prepares a counterattack. But the ladybug has already seen through Shinny's movements, and Shinny's fist was swinging at a speed that was hard to see. The ladybug rushed into a defensive position, but it still got hit in the face with a punch. The body flew backwards like a cannonball. The ladybug was clearly confused by Shinny. His strength and speed were beyond my expectations. By now Shinny was looking down at him from above. I don't know if you're too weak or I'm too strong. Tell me your name before you die. The ladybug feels insulted and completely enraged. He got up and clashed his fists together. And Shinny's attack came with it. But his fist landed on top of a barrier. And this red barrier was spreading. With a roar from the ladybug beast, Shinny was shaken out of the way. At this time there was a bus passing above the bridge hole. But the bridge was about to collapse because of the two men fighting. The unsuspecting Shinny hit from the bridge hole to the outside of the hole. Just as Shinny was about to take out her opponent in one fell swoop, the out-of-control bus broke through the guardrail. Shinny turned around and felt something bad, so he threw out his doppelganger. He retreated himself towards the bus. Luckily, Shinny caught the bus before it hit the ground. But as the whole bus pressed down, Shinny also looked a bit overwhelmed. At the same time his doppelganger was caught in the hands of the ladybug beast. If the opponent chooses to attack him at this point, then he will be in great danger. But he didn't expect the ladybug beast to come up and help him. The two of them together put the bus on the ground smoothly. With the people on the bus safely evacuated after, the ladybug beast was already impatient. Our game can continue. And then he rushed towards Shinny. And Shinny didn't seem to have him in her sights. He just raised his hand and blocked his opponent's attack. Then he slapped a claw on the head of the ladybug beast. This blow knocked the armor right off his face. At the same time, he lost the ability to continue fighting. Shinny grabbed his opponent by the neck and carried him in midair. The doppelganger ant then went up and sniffed. Then opened his mouth wide and prepared to swallow him. But was loudly stopped by Shinny. Then Shinny tossed him aside. After retrieving the doppelganger, Shinny turned her head and left the... The ladybug opened its eyes with difficulty and thought to itself. Next time we meet, I will beat you. Shurjin hasn't been seen since he turned into insect beast. Name would look for her every day after school. That day Name hung up the phone and was called by a voice behind her. The person who came was Qian Yong, the kid who fought with the reaper that day. Is Shurjin a friend of yours? I can take you to her. Shortly afterwards Qian Yong took Name into the grove. Name is afraid that Qian Yong will take advantage of the opportunity to violate himself, and asked, Do you really know where Shurjin is? Qian Yong heard it and no longer hid it, revealing his ugly face. I brought you here just to eat you. While talking a few larvae crawled down in the trees. I blame you for being Shurjin's friend. I really hate that guy. If I could eat you up, then she must be very angry. Some time ago, they tried to eat Shurjin, who had just become a larva. But afterwards she told Hannah about it. The result is that Hannah caused them heavy losses, but they can only eat this loss. Name didn't want to listen to his crap anymore, turning around and running away from this place. At this time Qian Yong has completed the bestialization. It was obviously too late to escape. Name's body slowly began to sink into the mud. With a command from Qian Yong, several larvae immediately lunged at Name, just in the nick of time. Those larvae that rushed over were suddenly cut into several pieces. The visitor is the moth in Hue. Seeing the food in the mouth again lost, Qian Yong is exceptionally angry. While in Hue was spinning overhead to build up his strength, landing and kicking Qian Yong hard in the head with his heel. The damage caused by this blow is small, but the insult is very strong. At this point in Hue took the opportunity to pull Name up again. Another insect beast helping humans. Who the hell are you? And Hue slowly landed on the silk thread and replied indifferently, I am your father. Then she turned her head to look at Name. I'm putting you down now. You have to run away immediately. After saying that, the silk thread hanging from Name suddenly loosens. She didn't understand why the insect beast in front of her saved herself. And she looked so familiar. Didn't I tell you to run? What else are you looking at? Name backed up after hearing that. She said thank you and then turned and fled the place. Several larvae saw this and tried to stop it. But they were all controlled by Anhui's silk threads. Anhui sliced the larvae into pieces with just a little bit of force. Anhui, who was covered in blood, seemed to have become the god of death who harvested insect beast. 
But this also enraged Shen Yong completely. You'll pay for what you did today. And Hue just faintly inquired. Are you a member of the Skyworm organization like Camille? Shen Yong couldn't help but laugh when he heard that. Since you know I'm a member of the Skyworm organization, why don't you beg for mercy? I know it's hard for me alone to deal with the members of the Skyworm organization. But what if I eat this egg? Chen Yong was shocked to see the worm egg in In Hue's hand. How did you get that? And Hue ignored him no longer. She knew that if she wanted to defeat this guy, she had to bet her hopes on this egg. So she put the egg directly into her mouth. Chen Yong saw this and felt that something was wrong. So he turns out four long, hard cones and shoots them at In Hue. And Hue's location was suddenly filled with smoke. At this time Chen Yong is very proud of. How much of a boost can you get from just taking one pill? What an idiot. But the next second his long cone was cut into several pieces by In Hue. Chen Yong was shocked. Why did a pill make her improve so much? On the contrary, An Hue has evolved into her latest form. I'll show you what I can do now. See what An Hue looks like now. Chen Yong can't help but be a little skeptical. What a joke. Could it be that the medicine I took before was fake? Not waiting for him to react. An Hue's sidekick is already on his head. The blow shattered his facial armor directly. And An Hue cut off his arm before landing on the ground. At this point Chen Yong's face was full of fear and he kept retreating backwards. This made him even more convinced that he had taken a fake drug. To confirm his suspicions, he had to take out the enemy in front of him. So he spat out his fanged esophagus at In Hue. The esophagus bites right into In Hue's neck stock. Chen Yong was very excited to see this. He thought he had one. But he didn't expect In Hue to be unresponsive. Are you tickling me? It turns out that Chen Yong's fangs didn't even pierce In Hue's epidermis. Then In Hue grabbed the esophagus. Then controlled the silk wire to wind it. The thread spread rapidly along the esophagus. Let me cut you into small pieces. Chen Yong saw this and felt that something was wrong. He had to bite off his esophagus to save himself. And then Chen Yong let out a resigned hiss. He didn't think he would lose so completely. Then he plunged headfirst into the ground. And Hui, on the other hand, has a calm face, as if everything was under her control. Chen Yong still fantasize, when I become strong, I must find her revenge. But the next moment his eyes were wide open. Because the path in front of him has been blocked by the grid wire. Just an instant pile of flesh and blood. And Hue feels so good after feeling her stronger power. And yet, just then, a man with a sharp knife came in front of her. This man was none other than Camille, with whom she had fought before. Although she and Shinny both came close to defeat at his hands. But now she has become stronger. And Hue thinks that she is now completely sure of defeating her opponent. Camel took this opportunity to ask about the whereabouts of the black ants. And said that the one wound he stabbed me with at that time. It still hurts. That's good. Just die and it won't hurt anymore. After saying. And Hue then controls the hair and shoots it towards Camille. Camel clearly didn't have an Hue in his sights. He blocked in Hue's attack by pulling out his sharp knife. But as soon as he made contact, the sharp knife instantly cracks. This is obviously the effect of the eggs. The knife then shattered into several pieces in front of Camille's eyes. And Hue then leapt into the air with a single bound. Camille saw this and put his hands on the weapon behind him. The moment in Hue's attack came, he again drew his sword to block it. But in Hue's sudden knee strike caught Camille off guard. And then another kick sends him flying. But that's not enough. And just as Inhue was about to step up and deliver the killing blow, she suddenly realized that her power was fading. With that, she fell to her knees next to Camille. Her hair was fading at a rate visible to the naked eye. In the blink of an eye, her body was back to its original form. While Camille's sharp knife was pressed against Inhue's neck. You'd better come back with me. I suddenly thought of an interesting game. At this moment Shinny was watching a video of Manhua Pai with grandmother. Suddenly the vibration of his phone caught his attention. But when he saw the message his face was filled with murderous anger. Because it was in Hue's armor that was on the picture. And the card of the sixth club inserted on it. Since in Hue lost to Camille. She became a prisoner in the sixth club. Forced into the Colosseum every day. Reduced to a plaything to be watched by others. The cruel insect beast tortured her inhumanely. On this day Camille came to the cell. By this time An Hue inside had been beaten to death. Camille curiously asks An Hue what the purpose is. Also, why didn't she fight back in the Colosseum? I didn't fight back because I didn't want to be at your mercy. If you want to talk about purpose, there is one, and that is to destroy you vermin. Camille's expression instantly turned grim when she heard that. Before he left, 
he told her that the next game was about to start. The crowd at the Coliseum was very excited at this point, because the host announced a special program. Only one of the ten contestants who participated today will survive. The first person to appear is today's hero, Anhui. She must kill the enemy in less than a minute. Otherwise, every minute that passes she will have one more enemy. Until Anhui dies or she can defeat all her opponents. By now the blue beetle on the other side has been waiting for a long time. Seeing Anhui appear, he instantly pounced on her. And Anhui didn't seem to take him seriously. Meanwhile not far from the stands. The ladybug beast that was defeated by Shinny is also here. He's right in front of Camille. Camille wants him on the field to take out Inhue. But the ladybug beast was very dismissive of Camille's arrangement. And to put me in a game that doesn't make sense. Are you insulting me? But if the target was you or Kong Dajuan, then I'd be happy to help. The words just came out. The ladybug then threw a punch at Camille. It's clear from here that the relationship between the two is very strained. Camille managed to get irritated by him. When the battle is about to break out but was interrupted by the sudden ringing of a cell phone. The caller was a member of the club staff. There was a guy who destroyed the elevator to the Coliseum. Camille hung up the phone in silence when she got the news. Then turning his head to remind the ladybug beast, the opponent you were expecting has appeared. The other side, and Hue in the Coliseum has taken out four opponents. But at this point she was at the end of her rope. But the club didn't give her time to breathe. A fifth opponent has appeared behind her. With a roar from him, the exhausted Inhue was kicked into midair by his opponent. This blow alone caused Inhue to spit out blood. As she landed, she was kicked hard in the waist. After being sent flying for tens of meters, Inhue apparently couldn't get up. A few more insect beasts came out at this time. They surrounded Inhue in the middle. The host has pronounced Inhue's death sentence, but all of them were attracted by the sudden noise at the entrance. At that moment the head of an insect beast slowly appeared in the darkness. Then it was thrown to the ground. The visitor stepped on it mercilessly. This man was none other than Shinny, who was full of murderous aura, and his doppelganger was carrying the body of an insect beast in his mouth. Camille in the audience also notices what's going on here. Several insect beasts on the field were also attracted by Shinny. The host immediately became furious at the sight of this. He raised his huge fist and smashed it against Shinny. And Shinny looked at his opponent as if he were looking at a dead man. At that moment his doppelgangers all converged on his right hand. The light from the mouth of the doppelganger spreads. Shinny saw the right moment to pull the trigger on the host. This blow directly blasted half of the opponent's body into slag. This is Shinny's latest plasma form. He said in a domineering voice, dare to bully my friend, you're all going to die today. He raised the ion cannon in his hand again, and shot the converging energy into the center of the insect beast. In a flash, another insect beast dies at his hands. The powerful energy almost affected Inhue on the side. Are you trying to take advantage of this opportunity to kill me too? The words just fell, and Hue was held under the neck by a sharp blade. Behind her, Camille kept flirting with Shinny. Fire at me if you have the guts. Shinny never expected the other side to be so mean. A time to raise the arms do not know what to do. Camille recognized that the other side was afraid to fire. So he ordered his men to take out Shinny. Look at the many enemies. Shinny covered her head with armor. And then a blast takes out another enemy. Shinny then recharged again. The barrel of the gun was aimed at the largest insect beast. Then without hesitation, he pulled the trigger. But just at this critical moment, the giant insect beast grabbed a small insect beast and then threw it at the flying shells. After successfully blocking Shinny's attack, the giant insect beast raises its powerful fist. Without waiting for Shinny's reaction, the entire body of the giant insect beast then lunged at him and pinned Shinny down. Camille saw this and thought she had it in the bag, so he ordered the giant insect beast to bring Shinny here. But after a long time he didn't respond. When he felt something was wrong it was too late. The face of the giant insect beast began to melt. And then an explosion blew it to smithereens. And Shinny came out of it unharmed. He is Camille, who is known as the strongest fighter in the Skyworm organization. And now he's so scared that he's taking a woman hostage. Because Shinny's latest form makes him feel threatened. In just a few rounds, he finished off all the insect beast fighters in the arena. Seeing how powerful Shinny is, Camille inquired curiously. Did you also eat the larvae? At this point Shinny is still full of killing intent. Please let go of my friend. With that, he slowly approached Camille. 
Seeing this, Camille brought the knife even closer to Anhui, and the people in the audience saw the player they had bet on being taken out, all shouting money back at Camille. This made Camille, who was already very angry, explode instantly. He slowly turned his head, and he looked at the crowd with a murderous look on his face. Then he shouted in anger, if you don't want to die, shut the fuck up. Shani was afraid that Anhui would get hurt and didn't dare to take any action. At this moment a voice suddenly called out to Shani. Your opponent is me. It's the red ladybug beast. Shani inquired curiously, are you here to seek revenge on me? The ladybug beast did not answer. Instead, it rushed directly towards Shani's direction. Shani was also ready to fight. But the ladybug beast bypassed Shani and rushed behind him. And then a straight right to Camille's face. And that punch saved Inhue from being in danger. Camille was sent flying for tens of meters before she was able to stabilize herself. By this time, Camille was completely enraged. Shini and Inhue were also at a loss. Ladybug said he just didn't like what Camille was doing. I want to have a man-to-man -man fight with you. Here first to me. You take your girlfriend and go first. I'm just here to get my spare rations back, but thank you in advance. And with that Shini put the spare rations on her shoulders, without waiting for Inhue's reaction. Shinny then darted towards the exit. Camille was very confused about the Ladybug Beast. Aren't you afraid that Kong Dajuan will eat you? Ladybug Beast didn't answer. Just slowly walked towards Camille. The battle between the two was on the verge. At this point Inhue was a little curious. How did you get down without the elevator key? But when she saw the hole she understood instantly. Just as Shinny stepped out, ready to leave the place. The sudden fall of debris overhead made him feel uneasy. Just now, Glasses, who had become Insect Beast, was sent to Kong Dajuan as food. The insect girl on the sidelines couldn't help but drool at the sight of it. Dajuan didn't want to share it with anyone else. Handed the insect girl a warning look. Just eat the flesh worm. Then I should be as strong as those guys up there. And with that he grabbed the insect beast and prepared to enjoy it. But at that moment, there was a sudden vibration in the room. At the same time a panicked henchman came running in. Master June, it's not good. Our Coliseum has been invaded. And the gang is about to escape. Kong Dajuan heard the words and came to his men. Do I have to do something like this myself? What else did he want to explain? But the next second Kong Dajuan pressed through the head. I don't need useless people here. Looks like pre-dinner exercise is necessary. Shinny's side just took the first step. An aura of death came over her in an instant. It was Kong Dajuan who was flying down with his fists. This punch sent Shinny straight to the ground. And that's just Kong Dajuan's punch without his transformation. It shattered Shinny's armor, spitting blood in mouth. Dajuan who was interrupted to eat looked very angry. He then lifted the dying Shinny into midair. By this time, Anhui was already trembling with fear. She had never encountered such a powerful sense of oppression before. Even Shinny has no power to fight in front of him. Don't worry, I won't kill you right away. I hope you'll let me have some fun. Having said that, he punched Shinny with a heavy punch in the stomach. Before Anhui could react from the shock, Kong Dajuan crossed her path in an instant. When Anhui turned around, Kong Dajuan's heavy foot had landed on Shinny's body. Then came the inhumane torture of Shinny. The stubborn Shinny roared with difficulty. Are you giving me a massage? But the force isn't enough. But his stubbornness is just asking for trouble. Kong Dajuan grabbed Shinny's head. Since you can't make me happy, then go to hell. But just then, Shinny's doppelganger suddenly appeared behind him. The doppelganger wrapped around one of Kong Dajuan's arms, and he picked up his head and he was ready to eat him. Kong Dajuan had to throw Shinny aside, throwing punches at the doppelganger. But in the next second, the arm that threw the punch was controlled by a few blue threads. It was in Hue's use of her powers that restricted his movement. But it's clear that she won't last long. The moves of the two were like toys in his eyes. On the other side of the arena, the ladybug has been cut up all over. Camel also fell to his knees in a weakened state. You can tell by looking at him, he did not have the advantage in the battle with the ladybug beast. The ladybug came to Camille and raised his middle finger. Your strength and character are far worse than the black ants. The words have just fallen. A sudden loud bang crashed through the wall behind him. It turned out to be Shinny and Anhui who had been thrown in. This instantly caught the attention of the ladybug beast. Kong Dajuan slowly came out of it. Camille, you're getting your ass kicked. Camille was about to explain but was interrupted by an angry Kong Dajuan. Who did this to you? You're one of my Kong Dajuan men. Before Metshini, 
The only thing Ladybug wants to beat is Kong Dajuan. The audience in the room was bewildered, because this is the first time they've seen the boss behind the scenes. Kong Dajuan greeted the audience in a friendly manner, and then looking at Shinny and the others, You guys haven't eaten yet, have you? Camille, go throw down the food. Camille thought he heard wrong. He was just about to confirm again when he was stopped by Kong Dajuan's eyes. Camille saw this and immediately got up and flew to the audience. Shinny and the others were curious about what the other side was up to. I saw a figure slowly falling from above. A closer look at this was a human being. The moment this person hit the ground, his body then slowly turned into a larva. Kong Dajuan, on the other hand, came behind him. This smells as delicious as ever. Then there are constantly turning into insect beast human falling from above. Soon Shinny and the others were surrounded. This is the food I prepared for you. Let's finish eating and then we'll continue fighting. This is a group of humans that just turned into insect beast. A side of Kong Dajuan is gnawing on their bodies. Just a little while ago, Shinny's ants also ate a fleshworm. And thus evolved greater strength. But even so, he was no match for Kong Dajuan. If Kong Dajuan is allowed to eat now, then the bruised and battered men would be even less of a match for him. Shinny, on the other hand, said coldly, You have to try to stop him from ingesting the larvae. I'll take care of the rest. But that's easy to say. But how to stop the monster? And yet, just then, Kong Dajuan pulls out a golden larva from the corpse of insect beast. The ladybug beast saw this and screamed oh no. Then he dashed towards Kong Dajuan. And Hue saw this and tried to help. But suddenly Shinny behind her called out to her. You should get out of here while you can. Leave this to us. The reason I came here in the first place was to save you. And Hue was very happy to hear Shinny say that. But you're underestimating me too. Me and the red guy will buy you time to absorb the larvae. But you have to hurry. The words have just fallen. And Hue then also rushed towards Kong Dajuan. Shinny then ordered the doppelgangers behind his to eat them all. The doppelganger immediately opened its mouth and rushed towards the insect beast. You guys go help eat too. Just after that, the armor turned into countless ants and rushed to the insect beast. The ladybug beast was waving its fist at Kong Dajuan. But his steel-like fist was easily bitten in the mouth by Kong Dajuan. The ladybug raises his other fist. But it also managed to get caught by the other one. I hate it when people interrupt my meals. After saying that, Kong Dajuan tossed his head. The ladybug beast then flew towards the audience, but his body landed on the blue silk thread. It was in Hue who arrived in time to use her ability. With the bouncing force of the silk thread, Ladybug once again charged at Kong Dajuan who wanted to eat. The punch landed solidly on his opponent's face. The ladybug continued to attack, swinging his fist wildly. Finally, he gathered all his power on top of his right hand, blasted Kong Dajuan straight out of the sky, but the opponent's toes held the ground firmly. He soon stabilized his retreating body, and he has put the meat worm in his hand into his mouth, and an indescribable power swept through his body. It was clear that the other side's aura was even more powerful than it had just been. Kong Dajuan throws a punch at the ladybug beast from across the air. The ladybug immediately opens its red shield. A powerful whirlwind blew the audience in all directions. The ladybug's shield also cracked. It's so powerful without being insectized. It's a monster. Kong Dajuan was also more than satisfied with this. If I could eat all the meatworms. It's not impossible to reach the strength of those guys up there. With that in mind Kong Dajuan stopped paying attention to his opponent, turned around and walked towards the food. But how could the ladybug beast let him get away with it so easily? And despite the danger to his life, he again raised his fist and charged at Dajuan. Anhue, who was trying to stop him, was obviously too late. Because Kong Dajuan's fist had already hit the ladybug's body. Without waiting for any reaction from the ladybug beast. Another kick to the face. The ladybug's body crashed into the wall like a cannonball. The armor on his head and body was completely broken, life and death unknown. And Hue was completely stunned by this scene. She knew she was wrong. This monster has not insectized yet. This is simply impossible to defeat. And he is still ingesting the power of the larvae. At this point Kong Dajuan grabs an insect beast again. Eat it and it's the fifth one. But Kong Dajuan suddenly had a look of disbelief on his face. This insect beast's body was crawling with ants and is turning back into a human. The larvae that could boost his strength were also dragged out of his mouth by ants. Kong Dajuan looked to the side curiously, and found that the ants had actually put the meatworm in Shinny's hand. 
Are you competing with me for food? Shinny didn't care about that. He put the meat worm directly into his mouth. Exactly 10 of them should be able to finish you off. You kid who's not afraid to die. You've managed to piss me off. You're going to pay for this. Since you ate my food, then let me eat you up. With that Kong Dajuan rushed towards Shinny. But just then, several black shadows suddenly emerged from Shinny's body. These black shadows turned into humanoid ant warriors when they hit the ground. The armor on Shinny's arm also sprouted a pair of purple eyes. Shinny slowly lifted her arm and pointed at Kong Dajuan. You guys go eat him. This is the black ant Shinny that ate 10 golden larvae. Although Kong Dajuan on the other side also ate 5 larvae. But at this point, Shinny was confident that she could take out her opponent. Just 10 more pieces of crap. Even if I don't insectize you are not my opponent. Shinny no longer speaks. He waved his hand. You guys go and eat him. The words just fell. The 11 ants behind Shinny all rushed towards Kong Dajuan. Facing these monsters, Kong Dajuan didn't panic in the slightest. And even a smile of excitement. The black ants at the front of the line were instantly scattered by his body. These doppelgangers were as fragile as toys in front of him. But the ants are like undead cockroaches. Kong Dajuan was not only restricted in his movements. The black ants that had just been dispersed also returned to their original form. At that moment, one of the doppelgangers saw the right moment to raise a powerful fist. And it hit Kong Dajuan on the head. The powerful force made him bend down. This is an insult to Kong Dajuan. While he was free from the restraints on his hands, both hands became swords and instantly scattered the doppelganger in front of him. But when he looked up he found an incredible scene. It turns out that the other two doppelgangers had already aimed their ion cannons at him. Looking at the aura emanating from the cannon, he knew it was no less powerful than Shinny herself. At that moment Shinny also slowly raised his left hand, with a command from him. Without hesitation, the two doppelgangers pulled the trigger. Kong Dajuan tried to hide, but it was impossible, because his feet were already in the deadly grip of the black ants. But he still wasn't the least bit nervous, and thought it was funny. But when the ion blast hit him, the pain from his body made Kong Dajuan clench his teeth. But the black ants attack didn't end there. They kept shooting ion cannons in the direction of Kong Dajuan. After a few minutes of this, Shinny gave the command to stop the attack. He thought the battle was over. But just as the smoke slowly cleared, a strange smiling face appeared in front of the crowd. A strong figure followed. This is the Kong Dajuan Great King Tiger Beast after his insectification. And it didn't hurt him a bit with that fierce attack. You're actually pretty good. Can actually force me to insectize. I'm really getting interested in you. I'm a bit reluctant to kill you. Shinny doesn't want to listen to his bullshit anymore. A direct wave of his hand. The two doppelgangers again aimed their ion cannons at Kong Dajuan. But this time, they didn't wait to pull the trigger. Then punched into slag by Kong Dajuan. The mere wind of the punch blasted a large crater into the wall behind Shinny. At this point, Shinny was completely exposed to her opponent. It was obviously too late for him to gather his doppelgangers. Kong Dajuan won't give Shinny another chance. He charged straight at him. Shinny hurriedly put her armor-laden arm in front of her chest, avoiding the risk of being smashed into a pulp. But even so, he was still pinned against the wall by Kong Dajuan. The strong squeeze left Shinny breathless. Ten flesh worms, and that's all the strength you've got? You disappoint me so much. The words just fell. Kong Dajuan slammed Shinny into the other room with renewed force. Then he pushed Shinny's head to the ground. The constant rubbing. Shinny couldn't hold on any longer and spit out a mouthful of blood. Kong Dajuan kicks Shinny slowly in midair. Now it's as easy as squashing an ant to kill you. I'll eat you up one bite at a time. I won't let you die so easily. Eat up, all of you. Shinny's sudden comment confused Kong Dajuan a bit. He didn't know that it wasn't meant for him at all. Kong Dajuan turned his head curiously. Shinny's doppelganger turned into several black snakes all rushing towards him. They took Shinny out of Kong Dajuan's hands and bit on him. The tearing pain made Shinny scream out loud. Kong Dajuan on the other side was a little confused. Are you hurting yourself? Just see. A black snake has come around behind Shinny. Then it opened its mouth and swallowed Shinny. And Shinny not only did not die, but also evolved into a terrifying azura form. At this point, Kong Dajuan seemed to be prey to Shinny's eyes. And in the eyes of Kong Dajuan, Shinny seems to be a dehumanized beast. Shinny just let out a roar and rushed at his opponent. Kong Dajuan grinned and thought that was interesting. 
After saying, he also swung his fist and rushed towards Shinny. And Huei was already speechless from the shock. Even if Shinny wins in the end, he'll become inhumane, right? He will become a demon who only kills. And so begins the final showdown between the two. Camille in the stands was shocked. The black ant were able to force the boss to turn on the insectization. How far could he have grown? This situation is now beyond their control. It must be reported to the higher-ups. With that in mind Camille said hello to his men and left the area. But at that moment, a figure suddenly emerged from the darkness. Camel saw this and was in a cold sweat. Please tell me about the black ant you're talking about. The community is interested in him. And the person who came was one of the seven top executives of the Skyworm organization. On the other side, Khan Dajuan and the black ants have wrestled. The two men were fighting back and forth. They were all trying to kill each other every time they struck. They all gave up defending each other. The battle was very intense. Kong Dajuan has the best skills. A punch to the face of the black ant. Just as the black ant's body flew backwards, a laser glides along Kong Dajuan's face. A searing pain made Kong Dajuan stare angrily at his opponent. The black ant's hands gripped the ground in a death grip to stabilize itself. A giant scorpion's tail was aimed at Kong Dajuan. The moment the energy converged. Without hesitation, the black ant shot at each other. Kong Dajuan hurriedly raised his arm to block the attack. Is that the only simple move you can do? Let me teach you a simpler one. After saying that, the hind legs suddenly push against the black ant's laser cannon then rush towards him. The impact sent the black ant's cannon barrel straight into the air. Although the laser cannon failed to do damage to Kong Dajuan, but the powerful destructive force instantly pierced the stairs of the club. The battle between the two men has long been a shock to Anhui who could not speak. At this time, the ladybug beast spat out a mouthful of blood and slowly woke up. Kong Dajuan pushed back against the black ant. The black ant suddenly launched a force to force back the opponent. But it didn't work. Kong Dajuan dodged the attack and threw a heavy punch. This blow severed the right arm of the black ant. But the broken arm instantly turned into a doppelganger and bit on Kong Dajuan's body. Without waiting for a reaction. The doppelganger's claws were already swinging at the opponent. But such an attack on Kong Dajuan's body is like scratching an itch. If that's all you've got, then you can go to hell. After saying, Kong Dajuan throws another punch and instantly smashed the black ant's body into crumbs. But it didn't end there as expected. And when he turned around he realized the black ant's body was healing rapidly at a rate visible to the naked eye. Kong Dajuan clenched his fist in anger at this scene. You're a tough guy. In that case I'll keep fighting until you can't recover. But just then the magic happens. Kong Dajuan's swinging arm miraculously disappeared. What the hell is going on here? Kong Dajuan slowly turned his head and found that his arm had fallen to the ground. It looks like the inside of the arm has become hollow and it's crawling with ants. Kong Dajuan couldn't believe he was hurt like this by a little bug. What the hell did you do to me? And with that he swung again and broke up the black ants. By now Kong Dajuan had lost his mind. Why did things turn out this way? I'd done my best. But why can't I beat the guy in front of me? Suddenly Kong Dajuan felt a chill down his back. It turned out that the black ant in the form of demons had come behind him. Struggle as hard as you can, my food. Are you kidding me? I'm the top predator. But before he could finish his sentence, he suddenly lost his weight and fell to the ground. It turned out that his legs had been eaten by the black ants in the same way. Kong Dajuan finally couldn't stand it and let out a heartbreaking scream. Even in my current form, you're no match for me. I'm still going to eat you up. But when he saw what the black ant looked like now, he shut his mouth instantly. At this point Kong Dajuan's heart was filled with tension and despair. He was actually shaking with fear. He kept begging the black ants for mercy. The black ants opened their bloody mouths and revealed Shinny, who was hiding inside. Let's start enjoying our meal. After that the black ants transformed into a hungry wolf and gnawed on Kong Dajuan's body. After he finished his last bite of flesh and blood, suddenly looked up and hissed at the top. And Huei heard the commotion and brought the ladybug beast to the black ant's side. What they saw was Shinny wrapped in black ants and the broken body of Kong Dajuan on the ground. This scene immediately gave an Huei a heart attack. Shinny, are you okay? She doesn't know that the person in front of her is no longer Shinny. Only to see the other person slowly turn her head. Here's our food again. He is the natural predator of the insect family, the great king tiger beast. 
But now he's not only had his limbs chopped off and eventually became someone else's food, only because his opponent was Shinny in her demonic Azura form, although Shinny won in the end. But at the same time he lost his humanity, and Huei heard the commotion and came to Shinny's side with the ladybug beast. What they saw in front of them was the broken body of the great king tiger armor beast and Shinny who had lost her humanity, seeing another food delivered to the door. Shinny showed an evil smile. The two men were also stunned by Shinny's current appearance. The evil aura that was in him seemed to have materialized. The two men could not breathe, without waiting for any reaction from the ladybug beast. The demon Shinny has arrived in front of an Huei. At this point it was too late for the ladybug to stop it. Because Shinny had already grabbed in Huei's neck. At the same time he shot a black shadow inside his body. The black shadow instantly turned into a doppelganger and bit into the ladybug's body. Shinny slowly lifted in Huei into the air. And Huei couldn't believe his eyes. She looked at Shinny and it was as if he had turned on Sharingan. Just as he was about to eat in Huei. The ladybug beast broke free just in time. A punch interrupts Shinny's feeding. And Huei also shouted angrily, Come to your senses, don't you even recognize me anymore? The ladybug beast is also disappointed with Shinny. This was not the black and he knew it all. The two coincided and attacked Shinny. Shinny's face was full of disdain in the face of the two men's actions. Let's start enjoying our food. With a command from Shinny. And Huei's legs and the ladybug's arms were instantly crawling with ants. These ants kept feeding on the chakra of both of them. If Shinny is not stopped in time, then they will end up like Kong Daijuan and be eaten as food by Shinny. Facing former friends, Shinny not only did not have the slightest compassion, and even showed a perverted smile, but this was not Shinny's intention. The real Shinny kneels like a sinner in his spiritual world. He was surrounded by black ants and numerous doppelgangers. At this point Shinny has lost the desire to fight back. After years of being tormented by ants, he had had enough. If you really like my body, then take it. After getting Shinny's permission, all the doppelgangers came towards him, ready to divide him up. But just then, a strange sound attracted their attention. Shinny slowly lifted her head, found a red claw trampling a giant black ant underfoot. Take a closer look. This is the same red ant that saved him last time when he was out of control. Thank you for coming out to save me again, but I've reached my limit. Let's just give up. The red ants heard this and started to glow with a bright red light. The next second, Shinny's eyes widened. Because those red lights converged into a human form in the blink of an eye. Shinny looked at this person as if she had an inexplicable sense of affinity. At that moment, the energy from the red ants instantly repelled the black ants that had come forward. The doppelganger sensed that the situation was not good and rushed towards the red ant. The red ant just lifted her hand. The doppelganger that came up was instantly turned into ashes. The powerful energy even reached Shinny on the side. Before leaving, the red ant said something to Shinny in a deep and meaningful way. My child, you must live well. Who are you? Please don't leave me alone. And Shinny could only watch as the red ants slowly disappeared. At this moment, Shinny in real time was holding her head and hissing in pain. And Huei and the ants on the ladybug beast also slowly faded away. The crisis is over. But when and Huei looked up at Shinny and found that he seemed to be going through something extraordinarily tragic, and Huei held him in her arms in distress, Shinny's emotions slowly stabilized. A tear suddenly fell on and Huei's shoulder. And Huei looked up and realized that Shinny was already in tears. Because the red ant he just saw was his mother, whom he hadn't seen in a long time. And Huei, who didn't know anything about it, was confused. The guy who was just going crazy is now crying. Shinny, what's wrong with you? It's all over. I'll take you away now. You guys really have an unusual relationship. You guys are dating, right? And Huei listened and threw Shinny right back at him. If you like him, it's yours. At this point the club's building collapsed. Just as several people were about to leave the area, a strange figure appeared silently behind them. Isn't it rude to just walk away like that? The two people who heard the sound were secretly alarmed. When did he appear there? Also appearing were Camille and two bug girls. The man slowly stood up. You guys did all this, right? The ladybug beast transferred Shinny to an Huei. This guy is dangerous. You guys go first. I just want to get off work quickly and ask a few questions. I hope you don't do anything stupid. Without waiting for the man to finish his sentence, Camille interjected from the side. How dare you guys kill my boss? The words have just fallen. He took the lead in the direction of Shinny. The two insect girls were following closely behind. The man behind them sighed helplessly. 
Then the heads of the two insect girls flew into midair. Camille was also pinned to the ground by a hand that suddenly appeared. This simple blow almost caused Camille to lose consciousness. It was this mysterious man who struck. I hate it when people interrupt me. And Huey and Ladybug Beast instantly realized. This man is definitely a more dangerous being than Kong Dajuan. Now I won't be bothered to talk anymore, will I? I am one of the six senior members of the Skyworm organization, the Poison Moth. Next you just have to answer my questions. First of all, our leader Brad is very appreciative of you. Do you three want to join the Skyworm organization? Three people didn't think he could ask such a reckless question. Where's the Brad guy you're talking about? I can't wait to kill him now. Please don't call our leader by his first name. I'm afraid I won't be able to resist the urge to kill you. You said you were part of the leadership. And how many of you are there in total? There are six cadres with the same strength as me. Kong Dajuan has been working hard to become one of us. Unfortunately, you killed him. But the organization had a problem with him for a long time. Even if you don't do it, I will kill him this time. We can't even look at a guy like him who relies on bugs to improve his strength. The Skyworm organization is now engaged in a fierce battle with humans. Our purpose is to replace humans at the top of the food chain. And Huey and the Ladybug Beast were shocked to hear that. I could kill you all in an instant right now. But the chief has asked me to spare your lives. So are you guys going to be in the Skyworm organization or not? All you have to do is answer yes or no. Both of them found the guy's tone of voice obnoxious. They made a friendly gesture towards each other in unison. The meaning of the gesture could not be clearer, but it also managed to piss off the man in front of him. At this point the ladybug beast suddenly came forward. I don't know what you have against each other. I just need to be able to fight against the strongest. Wouldn't it be a lot less fun if I joined the Skyworm organization? And Huey, not to mention. It was Brad who broke up her family. She would rather die than join the Skyworm organization. The man who had been angry laughed at the two men's comments. Young people can be wild, but not ignorant. I see what you mean. After all is said and done, the man then threw Camille in front of them. This guy is my gift to you. One of your group has to eat insect beast to survive. The person he's talking about is obviously Shinny. You can kill him or you can eat him. Do what you want. And after that he disappeared into thin air. And the ladybug beast finally breathed a sigh of relief. Then they left the place. Soon they flew to the uppermost level. The ladybug beast casually tossed Camille aside. And Huey couldn't help but roar at the sight of this. Why are you still carrying him? Don't you feel sorry for this guy? Besides, it's about to collapse down there. I'm still missing a sandbag. As they speak a group of humans are coming towards them. It was too late for the ladybug to realize that something was wrong. The reaper squad came in front of them in the blink of an eye. The ladybug beast saw this and hurriedly blocked the two behind them. The squad informed the situation to Bog who was still downstairs. They then rushed up to a few people. And Huey holds Shinny with one hand while making silk thread with the other. Shinny's human appearance must not be discovered by them. So they stopped tangling with humans after covering their faces. The reaper squad didn't let up, fired several shots at them. But the bullets didn't break through the ladybug's armor. The ladybug raises its fist in anger. Then he slammed into the ground with great force. This was used to stop the squad from continuing to hunt them down. Barger learned of the escape of the enemy while, and Huey several people also broke through the stairs of the club. Although several people looked a little bit worse for wear, but they managed to get out of there. Barger saw this and fired several shots at several people, but this distance was clearly out of range. He could only watch as the men fled. It's comforting to know that. They caught an insect beast in the field. It was the abandoned Camille. The strange thing is that the big meat worm that Kong Dajuan was going to eat is gone. I don't know who ate it secretly. The leader of the Reaper team, who hadn't been seen in many episodes, also reappeared. He called the other captains for an important meeting. They were all the most powerful beings in the Reaper division. Some viewers say the Reaper sector is weak. You wouldn't say that if you could see them fighting later. At this point, the one-eyed captain on the side impatiently inquired. What is the main content of this meeting? Why should we listen to his call when we are obviously at the same level? Each of them expressed their discontent. The meeting was in chaos. I heard that there were many accidents in the area under your jurisdiction. It's costing us a lot of resources. Please explain this. That's what this meeting is about. To prevent unnecessary sacrifices in the future. This man is a soul squad be combatant. 
but his words drew the scorn of another man. The relationship between the two men was clearly a little uncomfortable. I heard that one of your men also got the insect gene, and now he's a special agent who has risen through the ranks. And you're indifferent to it, oblivious to it. I also received the insect gene, what's wrong with that? You're just jealous that others have become more powerful than you. Actually, the captain of the B section just hates insects. It's just that it's hard to accept for a while. We are clearly the bug catching department here. Why are there bugs buzzing around? Should I kill him to make this place quieter? The sunglasses man is also very defiantly said. You try it. Their conversation woke up a captain who was sleeping. Please be quiet. I'll announce the meeting. We're gathered primarily to deal with a full-scale bug attack. We need a lot of combatants. Did you say total war? Would the bugs dare to attack our headquarters? You're right. These bugs have been active lately. They formed a group called the Skyworm Organization. One-eyed captain indicated that he had fought insect beast of the Skyworm group. They are indeed different from the regular insect beast. At this point, the long-haired man took out a notebook in his arms. I'll show you this. After reading the contents, a question was raised. Is the picture of the subject here a mother and child? The masked man saw this and grabbed the book. He always felt that this experimental body seems to have seen somewhere. Just as he was about to ask the captain something, suddenly an old man came in the doorway. Although I don't know where you got that book, but please stop spreading it. This person is none other than Dr. Wan from the lab. Is this book yours? Tell us a little bit about the above, please. That book is my disciples. But all the experiments inside I watched from the sidelines. The castle project was a secret project of the experimental team. Very few people knew about it. A total of three experiments were created and were very successful. But suddenly one day the laboratory burst into flames and destroyed everything. By the time the authorities arrived, there is only one experimental body left inside. Where's the experimental body you're talking about? Why don't we know anything about it? Dr. Wan also shook his head. That's all he knew. The rest is known only to the people above. You're studying that book because you want to fight insect beast, right? Want to get stronger. You can try the insect gene I developed. Your department never accepted my research. Do you guys want to take this opportunity to try it out? The disciple of the masked man was injected with my insect gene. Now promoted to the position of the next branch minister. The more the old man talked, the more excited he became. Not even noticing that an icy stare was watching him. The masked man couldn't take it anymore. Slammed his fist on the table. The marble tabletop was instantly smashed by him. Dr. Wan also finally closed his mouth. If you ever dare to make such a request of our group again, next time I'll smash your head in. Yet again, this draws ridicule from the sunglasses man. It's because of your supreme human dignity. That's why your team died so many people. Don't be discouraged, old man. Our group is very interested in your research. Don't forget our team next time you have a strengthen experiment. The meeting ended with a lot of noise. Come on, let's go back too. They don't know. The inside of Group B has been attacked. I don't know if you remember these two brothers. A few episodes ago, they killed an insect beast on the train. A golden larva crawled out of the corpse of the insect beast at that time. This larva was shot into the head of the brother. You can clearly see him moving around inside. At this point, the brother is under attack in the division. It was his brother who did it. Look at his appearance to know that this is a mutation. He took out all the guards here and stuck the knife in his brother's body. He then came to an iron gate. Without hesitation, he pressed the switch. As the iron door slowly opened, a dark figure emerged from inside. The brother showed an extremely excited expression when he saw this. How did that huge black shadow look so familiar? It looks like a larger black ant. The brother's height was just up to his knees. My brother was very excited to see this big guy. Then he fell to his knees. Please, my lord, help me to awaken. The monster didn't heed his request. Instead, it reached out and grabbed his head. And the brother thought the monster would fulfill his wish. But he didn't expect the monster to crush his head with just a little bit of force. The blood spurted everywhere. As the primary alarm went off, all combatants are headed this way. And also sprayed insecticide here beforehand. Soon the team surrounded the black monster. The monster saw this and let go of his brother who only had his body left. The squad didn't say anything and fired directly at the monster. At this point, the squad didn't know how he got out. Their bullets hit the monster's body as if it were a tickle. They couldn't do any real damage. At this point, the monster's throat let out a low roar. One of them realized too late that something was wrong. 
The monster waved his hand at the crowd. The people in front of him were instantly sliced in half. After solving this trouble, the monster was not in a hurry to leave. He seemed to be waiting for someone to come. At this point, several people who had finished the meeting were speeding back to the base. It turned out that the seriously injured brother had informed the captain of what had happened here. When they got back to the base, they found the place was on fire. After an explosion the car was forced to stop where it was. At this point, they finally realized how serious the development of the situation. The captain also saw the culprit of this accident. The black monster was seen slowly coming out of the smoke. The strongest battle-masked man was also secretly frightened. How did this scary guy get out? At the same time, the monster spotted them. The captain took out his weapon and blocked the monster. The hedgehog though wanted to fight together. But against such a powerful opponent, the captain told him to drive back to headquarters and ask for backup. At this point, the masked man was also ready to fight. You better not get in my way, he's mine. The captain silently lit a cigarette. Long time no strikes, surprisingly underestimated. Let's compete to see who's better. With a roar from the monster, both of them rushed towards the monster at the same time. A fierce battle was about to break out. Same time. In a luxurious villa. And Hue, fresh from the shower, came out of the room. She was almost blinded by the glowing gold man on the side. It turns out that these are the awards that Ladybug Beast won as a boxer. Since several people left the club, they came to Ladybug Beast's house. We are all insect beast. Why is this guy living so well? And Hue is obviously a little jealous. At this point Shani was placed on the couch by the two men. This fight took its toll on him. Although not awake for a while, but Anhui found that he recovered very quickly. It wasn't life-threatening. But the ladybug beast suddenly expressed great regret for bringing Shinny to the house. Because the ants inside of Shinny were crawling all over the place. This made the ladybug beast feel very uncomfortable. After a bit of banter, Anhui carefully cleaned Shinny's wounds. The ladybug beast pointed at Shinny and remembered something. The poisonous moth said that Brad wanted Shinny to live well. Why doesn't he kill us all for our trouble? And Hue looked at Shinny with a lot of heartache. She only remembered that Shinny acted very angry when she heard Brad's name. He wanted to kill that mystery guy more than anyone. Is it true that Shinny and the leader of the Skyworm organization have some special relationship? This man was originally a member of the Reaper squad. But he was accidentally infected by insect beast during a mission. Not only did he turn into an insect beast, he also took out many of his former companions, released the super monsters held in the headquarters. Facing the arrival of these guards, the monster just waved his hand. Everyone was instantly split in half by him. Then the monster walked out of the headquarters in style. A few of the captains who received the notice rushed towards the headquarters. Just after getting out of the car, they saw the monster coming out of the front. Facing such a scary guy, the two decided to take him on together. But just as the two men's weapons were about to slash at the monster's body, sensing that something was wrong, because their weapons were blocked by a black substance, unable to advance a single inch, the two men knew that the monster in front of them was very strong, but they didn't expect it to be this strong. At this point the black monster's mouth also let out a scoff. Is that all you can do as a captain? If that's the case, then you can all go to hell. After saying that the monster raised its arm, the two men sensed something was wrong and immediately put their weapons in front of their chests, body backwards, without waiting for the two to react. The black monster raises its arms and charges at them again, and at the same time these two were not shy. But in the process of attacking they were surprised to find, the black matter was a swarm of ants. And if we were defeated by ants, then we wouldn't have to hang around the department. After that, the masked man then throws his weapon at his opponent. At the same time, the captain unleashed a powerful electronic, wrapping up the broken blade thrown by the masked man. The two men's perfect coordination still failed to break through the black monster's defense. But their attack doesn't end there. Just see the masked man leaping up high, slashing the broken blade in his hand hard at the monster's body. A jet of purple blood instantly came out. How's that? Doesn't that feel good? The masked man's actions clearly angered his opponent. Do you know what it means to make me bleed? I'm not interested in what it means. All I know is that the color is really gross. After that, he leapt up again. The weapon in his hand kept swinging and slashing at the monster's body. The monster's eyes looked as if it was looking at a dead man. The masked man did not expect his full force to attack, but the other side did not react. He didn't even see the monster's movements when it came behind him. At the same time, 
The masked man's one arm and one leg were also cut off into midair, watching his partner get hurt. The captain could only roar in anger. The masked man is upset. Just seeing him land on one foot, turned back and slashed at the black monster again. He also managed to cut off one of the monster's arms. When he landed the masked man took the monster's arm in his arms. However, this small injury was nothing to the monster. The masked man is now half kneeling next to the monster. The ability to escape has been lost. He also knew that even the two of them together were no match for the monster. So he shouted for the captain to get out of the way. Abandoning teammates is something the captain can't do. He slowly walked up to the monster. The monster wasn't in a hurry to do it. Instead, he stated his demands. If you will be good enough to hand over the experimental case, I will consider letting you live. But the captain was confused and had no idea what he was talking about. The thing you're talking about should be an absolutely confidential matter. What are you going to do with that thing? In fact, the experimental case in the monster's mouth is the experimental body in the castle project. But he didn't know that the experiment was not in the reaper department. Before he could say what the experimental body did, the sudden appearance of the car then knocked the monster out. It turns out that the hedgehog didn't leave here. After seeing his companion injured, he drove into the monster. Here comes another guy who wants to die. I'll let you do it. After that he raised his hand and split the car in half. The hedgehog reacted in time and was not seriously hurt. Team leader, I'll buy some time. Please make sure you take Chen Zhan and leave alive. But the captain didn't pay any attention to the hedgehog. Because the captain knew in his heart. All three of them will probably die here today. Yet just then, a missile flew in this direction. It was too late for the monster to dodge, so he had to reach out and catch it. After an explosion, the two turned back to look behind them. It turned out to be Bagger arriving in a helicopter. The hedgehog took this opportunity to pick up Chinjan. Several people left the place in a helicopter. When the monster came out of the smoke and found them missing, instantly roared to the sky. After a few days, a recovered Shini and an Hue came to the school classroom. But they were the only two people in the classroom. Shinny picked up her phone only to find out that Name said the school was having a recess trip. This is the kind of thing that Inhue would never want to miss. Shinny, let's go for it too. Is there any way we can catch up with them? How can something like this be difficult for me? After a long time, the two appeared in front of the school. Then a red luxury car appeared in front of the two. It turns out that Inhue's solution was to let the ladybug beast act as the driver. Don't forget to buy me dinner when you two guys get there. Inhue can't wait. But just as they were happily on their way, there was a dragonfly following them right behind them. Could this dragonfly be from the Skyworm organization? What would be the purpose of following them? The boy was originally a soldier who defended his country, but now he's become a terrible insect beast. The reason for his mutation is a small dragonfly. Just a little while ago, the veterans in the army caught a dragonfly. The new recruits on the sidelines were praising the captain for being great. Only Shershi kept her head down and felt bored. The captain saw this and smiled evilly and came to Shershi's face. I've heard that it's rich in protein. I caught it for you to tonic your body. You will not not accept it, right? Shershi was shocked to hear that. But before he could refuse, the captain grabbed his mouth. If you say no, I'll make sure you have a very painful night. Sure she was so scared that she didn't dare to make a sound, had to be forced to accept. Then the captain stuffed the dragonfly into Shershi's mouth. Then he had his men watch together as Shershi swallowed. If he dares to spit it out, he feeds him a few more. After making sure Shershi eats it, a few people left the place like it was nothing. Shershi, on the other hand, shed tears of humiliation. However, the very next day, when the troops held a soccer match, it was a hot day, but Shershi felt cold. He felt as if something inside him was about to break out of its cocoon. The opposing player is coming towards him with the ball. The captain of the bully yelled at him to stop the ball. However Shershi was physically uncomfortable. Didn't hear it at all. By the time he reacted, the soccer ball had already been shot into the goal by the other team. The captain thought Shershi was playing him, and went up and punched him in the face, hitting him while verbally abusing him. The others seemed to have taken it in stride. No one came forward to discourage. Soon the night came. Tonight's duty officer is none other than Shershi and the captain. I'm sorry about the daytime. Will you take it easy? But Shershi kept his face as if he hadn't heard him. The captain saw this and then said loudly, I'm apologizing to you. Are you deaf? He didn't know that the dragonfly inside Shershi was almost completely digested by now, seeing that he was still unresponsive. The captain raised his arm and threw the cigarette in his hand directly at Shershi's body. Do you want me to fucking beat you up again? And yet, 
By this time Shershi's body had begun to mutate. The captain who wanted to teach Shershi a lesson suddenly stopped in his place. Because Shershi, who had just been a human, turned into an insect beast. The captain was also full of disbelief. A barrage of gunfire drowned out the captain's screams. On the other side, in a bus, Name is looking out the window in boredom. At that moment a boy with a lollipop in his hand noticed Name who was dazed. He handed the candy to Name. Pretty girl, please accept my love. Without waiting for him to finish his sentence, Name swung a fist at him. The boy was so frightened that he threw the candy to the ground. Don't tell me those boring things. Afterwards, Name noticed the lollipop on the floor. But just as she was bending down to pick it up, a black shadow suddenly flew past the window. The dark figure aimed the weapon in his hand at the moving bus. Except for Name, who was picking up a lollipop. The others were all shot to pieces. The boy who had just accosted Name had already lost his life. Name slowly lifted his head and found that the whole car was dead. And then something fell from the roof of the car. So it was the mutated soldier stood on top. What happens next? This is an unusually dangerous mutated insect beast. At this point, he's pointing his gun at the students on the bus. He basically shot everyone on the bus. Only Name, who was bending over to pick something up, escaped. On the other side, the three Unawarshini are rushing towards the side. On the way, Ladybug suddenly remembers something. When did you two start mutating? What made you think of that all of a sudden? Tell me about yourself first. Ladybug didn't talk nonsense after hearing it. He speaks directly of his past. It turns out he was a famous brawler back in school. At that time, he beat up a neighborhood bully who loved to bully students. But on the next day, the ladybugs suffered their revenge. Although he fights really well, but two fists can't beat four hands. The ladybug beast is soon battered and bruised. At the time, it was too angry. He couldn't control his emotions, so he mutated. Then he took out all the gangsters who were beating him up. And that's how his first mutation happened. Then he joined Club 6, learned a few things from Hannah, who makes bug medicine, whether it's ingesting bugs or being bitten by an insect with mutated cells. It's all going to mutate. Those cells become incorporated into our bodies and slowly change our genes. Without realizing it, the infected can live a normal life as normal people do. But once stimulated by the outside world, they may awaken the powers of insects. That's when he realized he had accidentally eaten a ladybug. Where did Hannah go after she disappeared from the club? Pity, such a pretty beauty. Listen to him. And Hue also remembered that she once ate a bug. Two years ago, and Hue and her father were on their way home. At that time, she stuck her head out of the car. At this time, a fluffy insect flew head on. The bug just flew into her mouth. The father on the side told her to spit it out quickly, but Inhui pointed to her mouth. She says she swallowed the bug. Then the Skyworm organization killed her family. From that day on, Inhui realized that his body had mutated. At this point, Inhui is lost in thought. Ladybug Beast sees this and hastily apologizes, excuse me, reminds you of something unhappy. Ladybug Beast then looks at Shinny in the rearview mirror. Black Ant, when did you start mutating? And Hui on the other side of the room is curious about this as well. Shinny, on the other hand, says he's been like this since he was very young. Can't remember the details. Although Shinny was telling the truth. But they were obviously a little disbelieving. Up ahead is the destination they're headed for. If there is no accident, an accident will appear soon. There's a traffic jam ahead. And there's a lot of troopers around. Then a soldier came to their car. He said there was a riot up ahead and told them to turn around and go back. But Inhoi really didn't want to give up the trip. She kept pleading with the soldiers to let them pass. At that moment, Shinny in the back of the car suddenly senses the scent of an insect beast nearby. At the same time, several gunshots were fired from a short distance away. It looks like there's a real problem up ahead. What do we do now? Facing the ladybug beast's inquiry, Shinny said coldly, Charge, there may be an insect beast in front. The ladybug beast listens and takes off with a kick of the gas pedal. I didn't think I'd see anything this exciting with you guys. By the time the soldiers reacted, it was too late. The ladybugs have driven through the guardrail. Gunfire is coming from the battlefield in front. The fighters are firing missiles into the air. The dragonfly insect beast dodges the missiles while the body dives sharply downward. It's obviously too late for the fighters to hide. In the blink of an eye they were sliced in half by the dragonflies. The surviving fighters are trying to call HQ for backup. But the enemy is right behind him. He slowly picks up a clip. He skillfully loads it onto his weapon. 
Now it's time to show some real skill. You guys deserve to die. The soldiers on the other side are still asking for backup. The next second, a grenade landed in front of him. The soldier is then drowned in the flames of the explosion. But when the smoke cleared, the soldier didn't take any damage. When he looks up he realizes that two mysterious men have arrived in front of him. This man is the purple-haired leader of Reaper Squad South. Leave the rest here to us. We'll kill that insect beast and avenge our brothers. The dragonfly seems to have sensed the danger, aiming his gun at the purple-haired captain. You're the insect beast that's been doing all the damage, aren't you? I will destroy you on behalf of justice. After she's finished, her two right-hand men came up behind her. The purple-haired captain also revealed a fist with lightning bolts in it. Can they really tackle this dragonfly insect beast? It's a brutal mutant insect beast. Before his mutation, he was a soldier defending his country, but now he's aiming his gun at a busload of students. Except for Name, everyone on the bus was killed. He'll be arrested by the fighters for such an insane act. To destroy this monster, the humans have used a powerful tracking missile. But the insect beast is too fast. Not only did the missile fail to hurt him, and they killed several human fighters. But luckily, the purple-haired captain of the Reaper squad got here. The dragonfly insect beast senses danger in his opponent, so it aims its gun at the purple-haired captain. Captain Purple Hair hates insect beast with a passion for what it does to people. She makes up her mind. This cruel man must be killed today. The dragonfly insect beast is no nonsense, pulls the trigger on her without hesitation, but the purple-haired captain didn't even try to dodge. The two men behind her have already taken the bullets for her. Then they suddenly disappeared into thin air. If she didn't have Dragonfly's compound eyes, he would have a hard time seeing his opponent's movements. Only to see the Dragonfly beast's body continuously retreating backwards. Meanwhile, the weapon in his hand keeps shooting out at the enemy. But the cloaks of the two warriors are like armor. It can't hurt them at all. The two fighters don't want to play with him either. Only sharp spikes sprouted from their arms. The two of them swung their spikes toward the Dragonfly. The dragonfly's arms are sliced off in an instant. A strong electric current sweeps through his body. The dragonfly screams. The purple-haired captain sees the moment. Over the two fighters and into the dragonfly. She raises her fist with lightning. If that's all you've got, you can go to hell. After saying, the dragonfly beast then gets a heavy punch in the face from her. And the purple-haired captain's punch was the famous thunderbolt punch. The dragonfly beast was sent flying dozens of meters by the punch. His left eye has been blown out. He doesn't look like he'll be able to fight again. But he still sends a defiant roar at his opponent. For the dragonfly beast's garbled screams, Captain Purple Hair lands another hard punch to the gut. The captain kept venting his anger on him. A cruel insect beast like you deserves to live and die by my fists. The dragonfly beast has been beaten to the point of unconsciousness. He looked at the fists swinging toward him. This scene, it's exactly the same as when the class president bullied himself, but the captain doesn't give him a chance to react. The fist landed on his face again, just as purple hair was about to kill him in one breath. She suddenly stopped, because the dragonfly mistook her for the class president, constantly begging purple hair for mercy. Purple hair mistook his words for an accomplice, so she had her men take him alive. Then she took him back to the base and tortured him. But at this point none of them realized. The dragonfly beast's newly chopped off hands actually grew back. The dragonfly beast, who was still begging for mercy, suddenly roared, trying to capture me. You are dreaming. Then he raised his regrown arm. Sensing danger, the two warriors charged at their captain. Only the arm of the dragonfly beast opened its mouth wide. From it, several small yellow insect beasts shoot out. The two warriors in front of the captain's body are instantly separated. They sacrifice their lives to save the captain. The dragonfly is still taunting the purple hair. Aren't you going to get me? How did you die so accidentally? The purple haired man who had lost his man instantly became enraged. Damn you, you son of a bitch. Dragonfly beast knows he's probably no match for her on the ground. So he flew into midair. He then raised his arm again and aimed it at the purple haired captain. In the next second, countless small insects flew towards purple hair. You think you can hurt me with such a boring trick? Purple Hair swung his fist with lightning into the air. The flying bugs were instantly electrocuted. The dragonfly beasts saw that their best moves couldn't hurt their opponent. He also stopped pestering, turned around and flew away from here. However how could the Purple Hair let him go so easily? She used the thousand-year-killed gesture to gather a surge of energy. 
The powerful energy shot towards the dragonflies as they flew away. The energy wave hits the dragonflies back with precision. The dragonfly's body falls uncontrollably from the attack. But halfway down, he's suddenly accelerating toward the front. Violet Hare saw this and became furious once again. How dare you fucking trick me? And then, she chased after the dragonfly beast in the direction it had fled in. She vows to take down this insect beast. Another look at the attacked bus. The staff guarding this side of the bus didn't notice a black shadow flying overhead. So it's an Hui sneaking in. She came inside the bus to check things out. And found it empty. And there's undried blood everywhere. The ladybug beast is posing as a student's brother. Find out from the staff here. They found out that there was no one inside the bus compartment. On the other side, Shinny is heading to the insect beast he sensed earlier. Halfway there, he gets a phone call. And Hoi reports to him what's going on here. With what she knows about insect beast, the people in the car were probably hidden as food. Shinny doesn't know if Nami was killed. To find that insect beast as quickly as possible, he undid the band-aid on his neck and released the ants inside. Soon the ants covered his entire body. The insect beast killer, the black ant, has reappeared. I wish he'd rescued the lovely Nami earlier. He removes the band-aid from his neck. Countless black ants are coming out of his neck. Soon these ants covered his entire body. Shinny transforms into an ant warrior once again. Because he's in a hurry to save an important companion. Just a little while ago, the bus Name was traveling on was attacked. The killer was a newly mutated dragonfly insect beast. Name looks up in horror and realized that the creature had stepped into the car. She's so scared, she hides behind the seat, afraid to make a sound. All the dragonfly saw was a car full of corpses. It doesn't seem to have noticed Nami's presence. After a long time, Nami didn't notice anything unusual, so she boldly looked out and realized that the dragonfly beast had left the area. She knows it's still dangerous out there, but just as she was about to call the police, a drop of slime lands on her cell phone from above. Nami slowly raises her head. She realizes that the creature is actually right above her head. At that moment, he stared at Nami with a lustful look in his eyes. Little beauty, are you looking for me? After saying, he opened his bloody mouth at Nami. When Nami woke up again, she found herself in a pile of dead people. Here are the bodies of the men from the bus. The bodies of Dragonfly's former comrades were also stored here. By now Nami is shaking with fear. What the hell is going on here? Meanwhile a strange sound is coming from outside. Nami looks up curiously at the outside of the warehouse. She feels something approaching the area at speed. Sure enough, it didn't take long for a green claw to land in front of Nami's eyes. It was the dragonfly beast that had just fought the purple-haired captain. Nami realizes this and hastens to lie down and play dead. She didn't dare make a sound. The dragonfly is exhausted after the battle. He needs to get some energy now. He walks over to a pile of bodies, crouching down and holding the food in front of him. At this point, Nami doesn't realize what the dragonfly behind her is up to. However, the next second, the dragonfly bites the head off of a corpse. There's a constant chewing sound coming from its mouth. The cruel insect beast has become obsessed with this tantalizing flavor. It took Nami hearing the sound to react. So this monster is eating people. The restored dragonfly's body has evolved again. He eats a dozen or so corpses before patting his stomach and belching. After eating and drinking, the dragonfly is ready to leave. Nami knows she must find a way out of here. Otherwise, she'll be eaten sooner or later. And then, I don't know who called her, the cell phone made a vibrating sound. At this point, Nami doesn't realize that the small vibration has attracted the attention of the dragonfly. She took out her phone and saw that it was Shinny calling. Shinny is relieved to know that Nami is safe for now, and promises to get her out. However, at this point the dragonfly beast has slowly made its way to Nami. Nami, who just hung up, seems to sense the danger as well. When she turns around, she realizes that the dragonfly is looking at her in a cannibalistic way. You're a bad girl, aren't you? After saying that he lifted Nami into the air. However he looked at Nami crying and begging for mercy from himself. Not only is there no mercy. He's showing a lot of anger. Because of the look on Nami's face. He remembered how he looked when he was bullied again. At the time, the captain was choking him like this. The dragonfly, overcome with rage, mistook Nami for the captain. I'll eat you one by one. Nami screams in terror. The dragonfly pulls Nami in front of it a little bit. Shinny. Where are you? Didn't we agree you'd save me? But all she's waiting for is the dragonfly's bloody mouth. 
But just as he was about to swallow Name, suddenly he was hit in the face by a black fist. It was the black ant Shani. He yanked off one of the dragonfly's hands. He holds Name to his chest. The dragonfly beast's body flies backwards uncontrollably from the blow. Name slowly turns her head. Saw the black ant's likeness. Could this man be Shani? This horny dragonfly beast caught a girl and wanted to do something bad to her. But just as he was about to lay his mouth on the girl, he was suddenly hit in the face by a black fist. It turned out that Shani, the black ant, had arrived in time to save Name from death. Name turns around and is surprised to find. This black insect beast is the same one that saved her life at the school. Is he Shani? At this point, the dragonfly is furious at the sudden interruption of its pleasure. Shani's broken arm not only grows back, but also grows stronger than ever. Shinny sees this and pulls out the ant captain that controls the doppelganger as well. He casually tosses the captain aside. The black ant doppelganger instantly reveals itself. The dragonfly sees this and raises its arm to aim at Shinny. Shinny orders the doppelganger to protect Name. He himself rushes towards his opponent. The dragonfly beast also pulled the trigger without hesitation. Faced with these flying bugs, Shinny doesn't take them seriously. On the run, Shinny can smash them with ease. However, the doppelganger behind him was also attacked. But luckily, Name inside was unharmed. Facing the Shinny coming at him, the dragonfly has no fear. With his compound eyes, he can easily dodge Shinny's punches. And he's also able to make effective counterattacks. Shinny can also block his opponent's counterattacks. The two fight back and forth. The fight is unusually fierce. However, Shinny is the more experienced fighter. He catches the dragonfly's head at the right moment and smashes it into the ground. Dragonfly, who was born as a soldier, suddenly felt bad. Aiming its hand cannon at Shinny as it escapes control. Shinny can't avoid it. Several bugs penetrate his body. This hit sends Shinny spitting blood. Looking at the dragonfly's side, he's already in midair. Shinny, who doesn't have the ability to fly, can't do anything about it. The dragonfly beast waving its hand casually. Several bugs surround Shinny in an instant. Then they all attack Shinny at the same time. Shinny was actually broken in half by these little bugs. The doppelganger on the other side of the room doesn't panic when he sees this. Inside, Name doesn't know what's going on. At this time, the severed upper body of Shinny was turning into several small ants. The dragonflies don't notice this. He thinks he's won. And then the next second, Shinny appears behind him. Then he raised his great claws of steel and swung them at the dragonfly. It's obviously too late for the dragonfly to dodge. This blow sends the dragonfly flying tens of meters away. It hits the wall hard. Shinny takes advantage of the situation. He's trying to take out his opponent in one go. Unexpectedly, the dragonfly beast not only adjusted its condition but also launched a counterattack against Shinny. Shinny has no choice but to play passive defense for now. At the same time, he gives the order to his doppelganger to gather. In the next second, Countless small black ants gathered behind the dragonfly. At first, the dragonfly doesn't give them a second thought. But there are more and more of these things. And finally they pounced on the dragonfly like demons. When the smoke cleared, Shinny thought it would end there. But then he realized that all that was left on the ground was one of the dragonfly's broken legs. When he turns around, he realizes. The dragonfly has broken through the roof and flown off into the distance and he's taken Name with him. Shinny sees this and leaps to the roof. But by now, the dragonflies are getting farther and farther away. Shinny couldn't help but blame her doppelganger. What else can you do but eat? I can do a lot of things. After saying that, the doppelganger attached itself to Shinny's back. Then Shinny got a pair of black wings and flew in the air. After a few minutes, they were getting closer to the dragonfly. But that's exactly what the dragonflies are planning. Watching the enemy come closer and closer, the dragonfly beast releases its grip and drops Name. Then he began to gather energy in his arms and aimed it at the falling Name. The moment Shinny catches Name, without hesitation, the dragonfly beast fires an energy blast at the two. Luckily Shinny's reflexes were quick enough to dodge the dragonfly's attack. As he looks back at the enemy and realizes that the dragonfly beast has been drowned in lightning, turns out the purple-haired captain of the reaper squad chased it here. The dragonfly beast was reduced to ashes with a wailing sound. After finishing off the dragonfly, the purple-haired captain sets his sights on Shinny. The black guy in front. You better not hurt that girl. Or I'll make you look like that guy back there.
She's the female leader of the Reaper team that hates insect beast the most. Just now, she saw an insect beast drop a human girl in the air. But she also realizes that the girl was saved by another black insect beast. This action turns her perception of the insect beast upside down. While the dragonfly beast isn't looking, the purple-haired captain drowned him in lightning with a single move. After taking care of the dragonfly beast, the purple-haired captain looks down on Shani. If you leave the girl alone, I'll consider sparing your life. But Shani's not having any of it. You think I'm afraid to take action just because you have a hostage in your hand? The words just fell out of my mouth. The purple-haired captain raises his fist and charges at Shinny. However, Shinny had no intention of dodging. He took the punch from the purple hair with a vengeance. While being knocked out by purple hair, Shinny threw Nami in front of the opponent with force. After seeing Nami being caught by her opponent, Shinny suddenly speeds up and leaves the area. The purple-haired captain can only get Nami to the surface first, and then drape her in her own clothes. And then the purple-haired captain releases the lightning chakra again. Then she chased after Shinny in the direction she had fled. Nami woke up just in time to see the two fighting in the air. Shinny is clearly at a disadvantage at this point. Faced with purple hair's attack, Shinny had no intention of fighting back. The purple-haired captain knew that his opponent's strength was not beneath him. Are you looking down on me because you only play defense? In the middle of a conversation, she throws another heavy punch at Shinny. The punch knocked Shinny straight out of the air and onto the ground. Shinny didn't expect her opponent to be so strong. The purple hair landed on the ground and slowly walked towards Shinny. You would be really trying to protect that child, wouldn't you? That girl is my friend. What's wrong with me protecting her? That dragonfly beast we just saw killed over 300 humans yesterday. You said you were protecting humans. Do you think I will believe insect beast nonsense? After talking, Purple Hair raised her fist and charged at Shinny once again. But just as Captain Purple Hair's fist was about to land on Shinny's face, someone behind her suddenly called out to her. So it's a waking Name who's arrived. Please don't hurt my friend again. Sister is a warrior of the Reaper squad, right? is a hero who specializes in hunting insect beast and saving humanity. But the man across from you is also an insect beast killer. And he saved my life more than once. Nami walks towards Shinny as she speaks. She blocks Shinny with her body. So please don't hurt my friends anymore. Seeing the way Nami behaved, purple hair grabbed her by the shoulders. What are you talking about? That guy's an insect beast that kills people. It looks like he's trying to save you. But who knows if he's up to something else. Did he threaten your family? If it is, wink at me. I can help you. However, things are not what Captain Purple Hair thinks they are. This black guy is my friend. Don't hurt him. But no matter how much Name explains, the purple-haired captain won't believe it. Because Captain Purple Hair knew. The insect beast, created to protect humanity, has been killed by them. Shinny is shocked. Do you also know about the castle project? But listening to you, you don't seem to know much. At this point, the purple-haired captain doesn't want to talk to Name. Get out of here, or you'll get hurt. Name was going to keep blocking, but then a big hand came to rest on her shoulder. That's enough, Name. Name heard this voice speak so familiarly. When she turns around, she realizes the black ant warrior is slowly shedding his armor. His true identity is Shinny, who Name has a crush on. I'll take care of the rest. Thank you, Name. I know the castle project you're talking about and I'm subject number one in that program. On the other side, and Huey and the ladybugs are heading in Shinny's direction. And Huey seems to notice something and stops the ladybug beast running forward. When they stop to take a closer look, Shinny was surprisingly captured by the Reaper sector. The two of them were instantly about to turn on their insectization when they saw it. I'll take the one with the purple hair. You take the rest. But ladybug beast's words were just finished. It's hit in the face by a miniature black fist. He thought it was Inhue who was dissatisfied with him again. But when they look down, they realize. It's a little black ant. The little ant left a message in the air that Shinny brought them. It tells them not to be nervous. Just sneak up behind them. Soon Name and the others are on the bus back. Shinny and the dragonfly are locked in the trunk. Captain Purple Hair reported the incident to headquarters. We captured the black ants alive. Public interrogation immediately upon arrival. Ask headquarters to prepare a room in advance. Soon they arrived at their destination. Name and the ladybug sneak up on them. Both are a little curious. What exactly is that shinny guy planning? After the purple-haired captain brought the two back to headquarters, they are first greeted by a group of medics. 
Please take care of this girl. She's a survivor of the accident. After distracting Name, they led Shini to another room. Look at Shini being taken away. Name clearly feels a twinge of unease. Shini gives him a reassuring look. I'll take you to the interrogation room. I hope you'll cooperate. Name also ran into an old acquaintance on her way to the infirmary. So Captain Longhair is here, too. Captain Longhair is tending to his wounded comrade, but his teammates yelled at him and were very dissatisfied. Because they're working on transplanting the arm of the insect beast, they got back into his body. You know me best, don't you? When my best disciple received the insect beast gene, and said it was done to protect the human race, he never saw the student again after that, though I've now become disabled. But I still can't accept the power of bugs and my beliefs won't change. The long-haired man listens and is no longer dissuaded. It's a good thing it's you. Even one arm and one leg won't change what you believe in. Don't worry, even with me like this, you're no match for me. While talking, the long-haired man received a phone call. After hanging up, he rushed out of the hospital room. Soon he saw Shani across the room. You're the insect beast killer black ant, aren't you? Shani just looks at each other when she hears this, and didn't say a word. Senpai's here too. How's the guy you were with? I still care more about this guy you brought back than him. Not only does he know about the castle plans, he may even be subject one himself. Soon they had Shini in the interrogation room. A group of mid-level cadres were more than a little concerned about this. I thought subject one was the woman in the photo. I never thought it would be a child like you, according to what we know. That king of the insect beast is also a result of the program. Are you the same as that guy? Though I don't remember much about my childhood, but he and I are not the same kind of people. I know what he's like. He's subject to. It's a mix of the strongest insect and ant program. Now the leader of the sky bug organization. And what is his purpose? Now even the top cadres don't know the purpose of his existence. All I know is that he's strong. And we're brothers. The two were shocked to hear this. In that case you should know where he is, right? Can you show us the way? Don't worry. I've already called the management here. He's on his way. The long-haired man is startled again at Shani's words. At that moment, an important person came to the door of the interrogation room. This man was none other than Mr. Kim, a high-ranking member of the Reaper Division. It really is Mr. Kim. What brings you here? I'm here to see Shani. Soon the long-haired man was notified. Stop Shani's interrogation immediately. What's the joke? Is something going on out there? Shinny has a calm expression. It's as if everything is as it should be. At this point, Mr. Kim has arrived at the mid-level cadre's room. Meet Mr. Kim. All rise in respect. Don't be nervous. I'm not the main character today. Our representative is back. Welcome. The words just fell. A short old man enters the room. And Mr. Kim treats her with respect. And this person turned out to be Shinny's grandmother. And she turns out to be a representative of the Reaper squad. I'm here to see my lovely grandson. I wonder if he's eaten yet. She's the first generation of insect experiment zero, the red ant. And is also Shinny's mother Shinjing. Like Shinny, she has a hole in her neck. And she's very pretty. The only difference is that the ants inside her are red. Just a short time ago Shinny was arrested by the Reaper squad. They took Shinny to the headquarters for interrogation. The Reaper team wanted to find out from Shinny about the Citadel program back in the day. Shinny, however, tells them, Someone will answer that question for me. The person Shinny is talking about is his grandmother. They didn't realize that grandma was an agent of the Reaper squad, the largest shareholder. At this point, a sudden announcement came over the radio. Tell them to stop interrogating Shinny immediately. The long-haired man is outraged when he hears this. What are you doing out there? Turns out Shinny's grandma has seen them outside. My grandson hasn't gotten any grief, has he? At this point, the staff also realized. The black ant inside is the old lady's grandson. The long-haired man also heard the agent's voice outside. Both are a little curious. Why is the agent here all of a sudden? Did you call them? Shinny heard her grandmother's voice and ordered the black ants to untie themselves from their bodies. Excuse me. This is something I have to unlock. The purple-haired captain saw this and immediately released his lightning chakra. She warned Shinny to stay put. I'm doing this for your own good. Otherwise, grandma will be sad. Grandma's already at the door. My precious grandson, you're really here. Come here and show grandma. Shinny bends down nicely when she sees her grandmother. He lets his grandmother shush him. The already confused captain is even more confused. This means the rep knows about the plan as well. Young man, 
you have a lot of questions don't you? I'll get you all the answers you need. But let's eat first. I can't let my grandson go hungry. You're in on it. Soon several people arrived at the restaurant. Mr. Kim, the boss in the eyes of the long-haired man, could only stand by the old lady in a good manner. There's no intention of sitting down for a meal. Shinny doesn't care. Taking a big bite out of her grandmother's food. After she's had her fill, grandma's ready to get down to business. I know you want to know about the castle project. Let me tell you about the castle project before it was founded. 18 years ago I was just the president of a Fortune 500 company. And Mr. Kim was just my secretary. On this day, I'm talking to my baby boy. Like his father, he's a vigilante. On this call, he said he was about to be promoted. After getting this news, Mr. Kim and I are very happy for him. But they weren't happy for long after. A co-worker tells him there's been a murder not far from here. Upon receiving the mission, the son immediately set out for the scene. And then, he hung up with me. But when he arrived at the scene, he realized it was a monster. With his colleague's head in his hand, my son immediately fired several shots at the other guy. But the bullets didn't even hurt the monster. At the same time, his actions have enraged the creature. In the next instant, the monster's bloodshot eyes pounced on my son. Though he kept fighting back. But in the end, he died a horrible death at the hands of the monster. I cried my heart out at the funeral. I didn't realize it would be me, the mother, who would have to see my son off. And then later I learned from the coroner that the death of my son was not the work of man. I was overcome with rage. I gave Secretary Kim an order that had to be fulfilled. No matter what method, my son's killer must be found. However, within a few days, a few men in white trench coats arrived in front of my office. Secretary Kim says she has some guests. I didn't want to see them originally. But they said it was about the murder of my son. So I made an appointment with these mysterious men. They say it was a bug that killed my son. I didn't believe them at the time. How can humans be killed by tiny bugs? But then he took out the picture in his pocket. These are the insect beasts, the ones that kill people. Where do you find these strange pictures? Also, what do you do for a living? I am Dr. Kim who is planning to fight the insect beast. I hope you will fund our project. In return. We will find your son's killer and get rid of him. Although I really want to avenge my son, but it's hard for me to believe what you said. Well, let's ask you to look at the results of our research. The words have just left my mouth. A red monster opens the door and walks in. This is our experimental subject number zero. You can call her red ant. This scene really scared the old lady. It almost got Kim's secretary to call the police. Yet Dr. Kim says this red ant is the hope of mankind only to see her slowly shed her armor to reveal her human form. I am Dr. Kim's daughter, Xinjing. I hope the old lady can sponsor us. She is the red ant number zero experimental subject in the castle project and Shinny's mother. 18 years ago, the doctor approached Shinny's grandmother for funding for the castle project, hoping for her support. In return, we will find your son's killer and root them out. But the old lady didn't believe the doctor. How could my son have been killed by a bug? Not until she saw the red ants appear. Insect beast actually exists in this world. So as not to scare the old lady, the red ants have shed their armor to reveal themselves as humans. I am the doctor's daughter Xinjing. I hope the old lady can sponsor us. With my current abilities, it won't be hard to find your son's killer. In order to avenge my son, the old lady already has plans to cooperate. You guys let me think about it. I'll get back to you in three days. I know you don't know more about our program. You can visit my lab. A few days later the old lady drove to the doctor's base. But when they get out of the car, they realize. The lab the doctor was talking about was so simple. Both are beginning to wonder if they've come to the wrong place. It didn't take long for the doctor to come out of it. Inside, please. I'll show you the results of my research. The two of them then followed the doctor into the lab. They found a lot of bug specimens hanging on the walls. The old lady wonders why hasn't seen your daughter. The doctor says she's preparing to show you a combat demonstration. A combat demonstration? What's that? It's Xinjing versus Insect Beast. You'll find out when you come to see it. The old woman slowly walks forward. Through the glass she sees Xinjing, ready to fight. And the room in front of Xinjing holds a terrifying insect beast, with Xinjing's nod of his head. Outside, the father presses the switch. The room holding insect beast was opened. But it doesn't seem to be any insect beast that's coming out. It's a human with a broken arm. I thought you said the opponent was a bug? What's going on here? It's about to start. 
Please watch carefully, and you will know. Xinjing is now releasing the ants in his body. Countless red ants are crawling out of the hole in her neck. They soon cover Xinjing's entire body, forming a hard armor. The insect beast on the opposite side also began to transform into insects. If you can defeat me, you can get out of here. At this point, the insect beast has also completed its transformation. An ear-piercing screech is emitted. And Grandma finally believed what the doctor said. Is that the kind of guy that killed my son? As speak, Xinjing is already wrestling with insect beast. The fight between the two has Grandma in stupefied disbelief. The insect beast swings its huge claws at Xinjing. Xinjing jumped into the air and spun his body to build up his strength. Insect beast doesn't wait to react. Xinjing sends him flying with a single kick. But when she landed on the ground in style, her body suddenly felt uncomfortable. However, the insect beast on the other side of the room doesn't give her a chance to catch her breath. Throws a wind blade directly at Xinjing. Insect beast's attack is just around the corner. Good thing the last second. Xinjing's body has regained its mobility. She raises her fist and rushes towards the insect beast, which is not far away. Insect beast reacts, but it's too late for him to dodge. Xinjing doesn't hesitate to hit him directly in the face. This hit sent insect beast straight to the ground. A rain of punches then fall on insect beast's body. The old woman was shocked by this scene. Is that what you call a way to fight monsters with monsters? My daughter is different. Not only does she not harm humans, she sees the insect beast as an enemy. Because it's her food. The countless ants inside Xinjing need to ingest insect beast for sustenance. Otherwise, the ants will turn on the host. The old lady was obviously a bit overwhelmed by this. At this point Xinjing rips off insect beast's other arm as well. He then raises his leg and prepares to strike him with a fatal blow. This one blows insect beast's head off. Let's eat it. With Xinjing's command, the ants left his body in droves. They're all heading for insect beast's body. But the next second, Xinjing can't hold on any longer. His body sank to the ground uncontrollably. The old woman thought it was a side effect of the transformation. However, the doctor said it was because Xinjing was pregnant. You're willing to let your pregnant daughter be an experiment? With that, the old woman angrily grabbed the doctor by the collar. Are you still human? She's your daughter. Even if this is about catching my son's killer, I wouldn't agree with you risking this child. And I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to work with people like you. Xinjing, who had just come out, stopped the angry old lady. Please stop blaming my father. I volunteered. My husband was also killed by insect beast. I was blinded by hatred at the time. And I didn't even know I was pregnant. But I don't regret it now. I can't let my children live in a world where the insect beast runs amok. So please sponsor us. For the sake of the children. Please. You can tell from the old lady's expression that she was touched. She then looks to the doctor. I agree to finance you. But my only request is that the child not be burdened. She can't be put in danger. Don't worry about that. She's my daughter. For a long time to come. Grandma lived with Xinjing. Secretary Kim, on the other hand, was sent out. Searching for a host that can become experiment number one. The doctor who got the grant is also at ease with his research. Xinjing's belly is getting bigger and bigger. Finally on this day, the sound of a baby crying came from the maternity ward. The grandmother was so excited that she burst into tears as she held the baby in her arms. Has the little one been given a name yet? He's been named. His name is Shinny. So the little guy takes his mom's name. Our little Shinny is so cute. Grandma looks up and notices that the doctor seems to be staring out the window. Why don't you come over and see what the kid is doing standing there? When the doctor turns around, Grandma realizes there's a baby in his arms. The little guy's name is Shinzon. He's Shinny's brother. She is the most powerful experimental subject in the castle project. But not only was she severely injured in a battle against the insect beast, she also had her hamstring and leg torn off just a little while ago. The red ants gave birth to two babies. One is Shinny, the black ant. The other, Shinzon, is the future leader of the skybugs. Time flies. The two little ones are now five years old. These two naughty boys used to kick the ball into their grandmother's face. Grandma spent even more time with them than mom over the years. I'm going to kick your asses today. After that, grandma chased the two kids all over the place. When they got tired, they snuggled up in grandma's arms and rested. At this point Shinzon looks up and asks about grandma. When will mommy be back? Shinny also pouted and muttered, I miss my mommy. There's really nothing I can do against you. 
Let me take you to the lab in a couple days. Waiting for grandma to come to the lab the day she suddenly received a shocking news. The staff said they had found her son's killer. This insect beast has recently killed over 60 more humans. The wounds are the same as your son's. At this time, my mother just finished her work and came here. Give me the location of the insect beast. Prepare to depart immediately. The old lady heard it, but she grabbed her. Can you not go? What's gonna happen to the baby if you go? I've always remembered my promise to grandma. Don't worry, I'll catch that guy and come back safely. Thanks to your financial support. Our experimental techniques are now fully matured. But no matter what mom says, grandma never let go of her hand. Until mom said she had to tell her a secret. Then the two of them went to a place where no one was around. One night not too long ago, the two little ones were watching cartoons with great interest. It's about a tiger warrior who hunts monsters. Shinzan's eyes light up at the sight of the tiger's weapon. Shinzan then turns his head to look at his mom, hoping to get the same weapon as the tiger warrior. Mom has promised to take him to buy it tomorrow, but Shinzan won't stop. At this point, mom's attention is on Shinzan. She doesn't notice Shinny's change. Until Shinny used the black ants to change into a tiger blade and walked up to them. Mom's jaw dropped when she saw it. Shinzan was so happy to get the tiger's blade. He immediately ran away to play. And when he turns around, he realizes. Mom is holding Shinny tightly in her arms. While shedding tears and saying sorry. That's the secret mom told grandma. Grandma was shocked when she heard it. What about Shinzan? Is he okay? Then I took Shinzan for a checkup. There was no abnormality found. The reason why I'm telling you in advance. It's because I'm afraid Shinny will scare you when I'm not around. How come? What kind of grandmother would be surprised by her own grandson? You must come back safely. I don't want to lose you as my daughter again. It turns out the two have lived together for so long. Grandma has long treated Shinjing as her own daughter. A few days have passed. Grandma is taking a nap. And the two naughty boys don't want to disturb Grandma's rest. Shinzan has come up with a great idea. Let's go prank Uncle Fail. The two of them then went to the lab hall, lay down on the window and watch the blue ants inside transform. This is an important stage in the blue ants transformation. If he succeeds, he'll become subject 1. The ants obedience rate has exceeded all previous records. It's at 70% and the two kids are watching in fascination. And that's when. Shinzan also had the idea of becoming an insect beast warrior. It didn't take long for the blue ants obedience rate to drop drastically. In the end, he fails. It's obvious he's upset too. Afterwards, the assistant analyzes the reason for blue ants failure. If it fails to transform successfully, then he can't be subject one. I gave up my career as a professional boxer for your plan. Isn't it your fault that I didn't succeed? It's already a big deal that ants are settling inside you. The rest of your transformation is up to you. There's nothing any of us can do for you. The blue ant doesn't want to hear any more of this. Turned and left the lab. But just as he got to the door, he saw these two little guys. Why does uncle always fail to transform? You're a real failure, aren't you? You're not even as good as my brother. He can even transform into a tiger blade for me to play with. At this point, Shinzan has long forgotten his mom's promise of secrecy. Soon the group came to a place where no one was around. The blue ants didn't realize that what these two little guys said was true. I didn't lie to you, did I? My brother is much more powerful than you. This is also a deep blow to blue ants ego. He slowly walks over to Shinny and lifts him up high. Tell uncle how did you do that? But Shinny couldn't tell me why even after thinking about it. This caused the blue ants, who were in a hurry to transform, to become furious. Say something, seeing your brother being bullied. Shinzan takes his tiger blade and slashes at the older man. Just then, a couple of medics rush past the back. Something about Subject Zero coming back injured. The others froze in disbelief. Then they flew towards the infirmary. When the two arrived at the infirmary they realized. By now the grandmother was in tears. Mom is covered in wounds. And there's a lot of blood coming out. Don't worry, grandma. I'm fine. I've got the guy who killed your son. This is the most evil mutant insect beast ever. And the red ants were badly injured trying to catch it. Seeing two children coming towards him, Red Ant drags his badly injured body to try and embrace them. But she falls to the ground before she can take a few steps. Grandma rushed forward to help her. Grandma, I've caught your son's killer. And the beast has been locked in a room in the lab. The doctor and his assistant are more than a little shocked to see him, though he was already securely bound. But the aura emanating from him is chilling. 
Is this the strongest insect beast? At this point, no one can see the doctor's ambitions. Only the insect beast inside senses the danger. He felt that the human in front of him was even darker than himself. And mom's already in the hibernation chamber. From the assistant, mom's life is not in danger. But due to the severity of her injuries, I may not be able to continue as Red Ant in the future. The grandma who heard this felt very guilty. If it wasn't for avenging her son's death, she wouldn't be in this state. The two little ones are crying too. Grandma felt even worse. Just then the doctor walked in. He was all gloomy, like he was sad. The aide reported Xinjing's current situation to him. The doctor slowly comes to her. Not a word was said. Grandma kept apologizing to the doctor from the sidelines. You can tell from the look on grandma's face that she feels very sorry for the child's mother. But the next words of the doctor made the grandmother's jaw drop in shock. You don't have to apologize to me. I still have to thank you. We wouldn't have gotten that horrible monster if it wasn't for your funding. Am I right? Grandma could never have imagined this scenario. A father can still laugh. The doctor next turns his attention to the two children. He then reached out to take Shani, one of them. Grandma rushes to protect Shani in her arms. What are you doing to the child? Shani is a special being born to be chosen by ants. I'm just checking on his health. Trying to make up for his mom's shortcomings. You crazy bastard. How dare you try to use a child as your test subject. I won't agree to that. I'll raise Shani to be a hero to mankind. And don't forget. This is my grandson. I don't need outsiders to tell me what to do with him. Watching two relatives both fighting over their brother. Shinzan's heart feels a little bad. Watching the doctor carry Shinny away from her grandmother. In Shinzan's eyes, all they seem to care about is Shinny. The doctor lifting Shinny high in the air. This is my perfect grandson. On his way out, the doctor told grandma. I'll put Shinny in the basement. You can come see him if you want. With that, the doctor left the premises. Grandma is now very sorry for her decision. If I had not chosen to fund my PhD, the situation would not be what it is now. Shinzan's next words were a blow to grandma's head. It turned out that when he first learned that Shinny had ants on her body, Shinzan overheard the doctor whispering to him, You're the perfect subject number one in my mind. Why do you all only care about Shinny? If I could become number one, would I be able to get everyone's love like Shinny? Shinzan, what are you babbling about? You don't want to be obsessed with that kind of power. That's painful. But Shinzan doesn't even understand his grandmother's words. I hate all of you. Ignoring grandma's call, he left the place without looking back. Grandma looks back at mom as she gets up. Noticed the ants inside were getting frisky. Shinzan, on the other hand, finds the blue ants. He told them all of his grievances. Uncle, do you want to be number one because you want to be embraced by your family? How can I be like you? I'm in it for the glory. But no matter how hard I try, I can only control a small percentage of the ants. Watched as the ants in his hand dispersed again. Shinzan is calling him Uncle Failure again. This makes him angry, too. He then got up and slammed his fist into the small tree behind him. I can't do what a five-year-old can do. Shinzan is horrified. The blue ants punch had just knocked the wasp out of the tree. By now a few wasps had already flown towards them. The blue ant sees this and pushes Shinzan aside, yelling at him to get out of the way. He then flung the ants into the air with a huge wave of his hand. The ants have managed to bite a few wasps as well, but there are still a few that have managed to bypass the blue ants and head towards Shinzan. Shinzan was so frightened by this scene that he raised his hands in front of his face. However, the next moment something magical happened. The wasps all went into Shinzan's body. The blue ant rushed forward to check on him. However, the unthinkable happens again. The wasp that had just entered Shinzan's body flew out again. After a long time Shinzan gets up and walks towards the blue ants. A Jussie, I feel hungry. My body is itching. Shinny, who is only five years old, has become subject number one. The doctor has been pampering Shinny ever since he learned that he has ants living inside him. But this also caused the jealousy of his younger brother Shinzan. Unbeknownst to him, Shinzan has even more terrifying powers than Shinny. Just now, Shinzan was attacked by a swarm of hornets. And miraculously, the wasps all got inside him. The blue ants rush forward to check on him. But then the unthinkable happens again. The wasps that had just entered Shinzan's body flew out unharmed. After a long time, Shinzan gets up and walks shakily towards the blue ants. You can tell just by looking at him. Shinzan is already on the verge of insect transformation. A Jussie, my body is itching. The blue ants are also concerned and ask, should I take you to the hospital? 
Shinzan thought of a better idea. I'm going to show it off to Grandpa. I want to be an experiment too. On the other side Shinny is locked in an empty room. The doctor is observing his proficiency in controlling ants. Shinny gathered all the ants on her fingers. A small knife then appeared in front of him. You know, mom's red ants only have a 97% compliance rate. And Shinny's black ants have a 99.9% .9 compliance rate. But every time she finishes playing with the ants, Shinny feels hungry. The ants will torture him inside then. The doctor listens and prepares an insect beast arm for Shinny. And tells Shinny to try to get the ants to eat it. With Shinny's command, the ants quickly leave Shinny's side. They all converge on the insect beast's arm. At this point, the doctor has completely mastered the properties of the black ants. It's different from the red and blue ants. They are individuals naturally formed in Shinny's body. Cohesion and execution are much better than the former. The only downside is that it's very brutal, like wild ants in the jungle. The ant population in Shinny is still very small. If they reproduce to a certain extent, there's a chance they'll eat him. On the other side Shinzan runs excitedly to the lab. Now I'm as powerful as my brother. Mom is number zero. Brother is number one. I'm number two. Shinzan was extremely happy when he thought that he could become a hero. He wanted to tell his grandfather the good news right away. But the room is empty. Where could grandpa be if he wasn't in the lab? And yet, just then. Instead, the sound of chains falling came from within the room. When Shinzan turns around he realizes. The most powerful insect beast of them all had broken free. He's staring at himself through the glass. At the same time, there's a shrill alarm in the hallway. After hearing this, the doctor and his assistant felt that something was wrong. The doctor, reacting to the situation, immediately gives the order. Everyone gather on the third basement level immediately. At this moment, the strongest insect beast is slowly approaching Shinzan with bloodshot eyes. Shinzan is so scared that he freezes in place. The monster pushed out the blast glass with just a little bit of force. The next second he rushed out of the room and lunged at Shinzan. But just in the nick of time, the blue ants burst in. A punch to the monster's face. Although this punch defeated the monster, it didn't actually hurt him much. Due to the low compliance rate of blue ants, his transformation is not only imperfect, it doesn't last long. The blue ant knows this. So he took the initiative and tried to make it quick. At the same time, the monster hissed and darted toward the blue ants. Both of them abandoned their defenses, attacking each other in the face. But soon the blue ant are losing ground. He had been beaten until he vomited blood. Although the monster also took a lot of punches. But it's unharmed. The monster's hardened tentacles are about to impale itself. Luckily, he was able to dodge the deadly blow beforehand. But he was still stabbed in the stomach. As a professional boxer, Blue Ant is not one to be defeated. Raising his fists, he's going to fight back. Unfortunately for him, the monster is much stronger. He was smashed into the ground. The monster isn't stopping. Raining punches all fall on the Blue Ant's body. Looking at the already dying Blue Ants, Shinzan, on the other side of the room, is incredibly angry. I've clearly gained power. Why can't I do anything? Only to see him yell at the monster, you beast. Stop it. At the same time, Shinzan's body glows brightly. The monster stops moving its hands. It's kind of fun to look at this little nub. As Shinzan's light dissipates, the monster moves toward him a little bit. If I eat you, maybe I'll get stronger. The monster smiled eerily after saying that. Are you kidding me? Our fight isn't over yet. As the monster looks back at the sound, spotting a mutant wasp darting towards itself. If he hadn't reacted fast enough, it would have gone right through his head. Though the fatal blow was avoided, but the wasp's speed advantage is still causing him a lot of damage. At this point, the blue ant doesn't know why he suddenly turned into a wasp. When Shinzan looked at the uncle in front of him, realizes he's not as heroic as he should be. Instead, he's more like an insect beast. The blue ant doesn't see anything wrong with that. Charging towards the monster again. This time he drives his spikes into the monster with precision. And then the buildup sent him flying. It's clear that the monster has taken a lot of damage this time as well. But the wasp is even worse at this point. He can't even stand up. The monster doesn't want to play with him anymore. Prepare to send him on his way. Shinzan, on the other side, actually stopped the monster in order to protect the uncle. Only to see him extend his palm towards the monster. I told you to stop. You stop. As Shinzan continues to exert his strength, the monster's body twists. 
In the end, he actually sucked the entire monster into his body, but it was also very painful for Shinzan. After a long time, a few of the doctor's men finally made it here. But they don't see the monster. Instead, they saw Shinzan's glowing little hand holding the uncle's hand. It looks like the little guy is healing uncle. The uncle who was in a lot of pain the last second. And the next second, he's got an intriguing smile on his face. Two mutant insect beasts have suddenly appeared on the streets of the country. This scene attracted a lot of people to watch. Apparently, these ignorant humans don't realize the horrors of the insect beast at this point. Just as insect beast raises his hand to finish off the human in front of him, a blue figure suddenly appeared in front of him. Then he easily sliced off insect beast's head. So he's the blue ant from the lab. At this point, he's officially subject to watching the insect beast fly away with a hostage. The blue ant converges its energy into its arm and aims it at him. As the blue ant shoots the energy out, the hostage-taking insect beast is instantly cleaved in half. But the building behind him is also shattered by this energy of his. Although blue ants rescued a hostage, but more people died in the fire because of him. Look at everything happening in front of you. The blue ant's heart is unmoving. Back at the lab, the doctor immediately put him under observation. From an assistant on the sidelines, there were 36 civilian casualties in this operation. I sent you out there so you could destroy the insect beast, not to kill humans. Are you a hero or an insect beast? The blue ant is not impressed. It's not uncommon for accidents to happen during operations. It's clear that the blue ants are enjoying their current power. Since that incident two months ago, blue ant feels like he's been reborn. The blue ants, who used to have an 80% compliance rate, are now at 97%, just can't control their power sometimes. At this point, the doctor also made it clear. I don't need uncontrollable heroes. Red ant are now unable to move. I think I'm the only one you can use, right? Don't forget you're only number two. There's subject one above you. That's my five-year-old grandson. I can dump you anytime I want. At this moment, the mother is calling out to her two children with a pot of food. This is the food that grandma has prepared for you. Shani was so happy to hear that she ran out. But why hasn't grandma been around lately? I miss her so much. Mom's confused, too. Grandma hasn't been around since she got in trouble with the doctor. But when she left, she said she'd continue her support. Next time, mom will take you to grandma's company to play. Tell Shinzan to come over for dinner. Just as Shinny goes out to look for Shinzan, he found out that he was staying with his grandfather. At this point, Shinzan is showing grandpa what he can do. It's because of my ability that Uncle Failure successfully transformed. I'm sure I can be a hero too, right, grandpa? It turns out Shinzan's body is like an insect collecting net. Not only can it suck the power out of insects, What's scary is that it can grant this power to humans. All the people in the lab think it's a very dangerous being. There's the potential for a large number of insect beasts. After demonstrating his abilities, Shinzan's long-awaited hug has finally landed on his head. But then Grandpa's next words brought Shinzan's mood down again. You can't be a hero, because you're a failed piece of work. All of this was watched by Shinny, who was not far away. Soon the night is falling. The two little ones lay down in their own beds. But Shinzan doesn't sleep a wink. He slowly sits up. He then crept over to Shinny's face. At that moment, mom, who was just about to fall asleep, was suddenly awakened by Shinny's screams. So she rushed to the child's room. The scene in front of her immediately made her eyes widen. Only to see Shinzan was using his ability on Shinny to suck the black ants from his body. If I can get the power of the ants, then I can become a hero too. However, he was greeted with a resounding slap from his mom, and then angrily questioned Shinzan, what are you doing? Why did you strike out at your own brother? I just wanted to have the same power as Shinny. I want to be a hero. Having ants living in your body is a pain in the ass. Why are you envious? When mom learned that there were no ants on your body, I was really happy for you. So let's just be ordinary people. It's true that no one likes my abilities. Grandpa was right. I am a failure. After saying that Shinzan ran outside despite his mom's shouts, but he just ran to the door and realized that grandpa had come here. It turns out that he could clearly see everything that happened in the house just now on the surveillance camera. I'm here to take Shinzan. Shinny must not be harmed in any way. After saying that he sent his men to take Shinzan under control. On his way out, Shinzan looks back at his mom with reluctance. Mom wants to keep him, but there's nothing she can do. 
The doctor arranged for Shinzan to be isolated in a separate room. Shinzan is never allowed to leave the room without gaining the ability to control him. The doctor icily announced the rules for controlling Shinzan. At this point Shinzan feels abandoned by his family, and he feels that he is not a failed work. It was the only one that was perfect. This boy even hurt his brother in order to become a human hero. But Shinzan's behavior was not only met with a severe slap in the face by his mother, and finally, he was taken away by his grandfather and locked up in a dark laboratory. But at this point, they didn't realize how terrifying Shinzan was. Half a month later, mother came to the doctor. It's been so long, isn't it time to return Shinzan to me? But the doctor is unmoved, and said that if he couldn't control Shinzan's powers, he could never let him go. At this point, the blue ant is outside the door, listening in on the conversation. He knows how vicious the doctor can be, even though it was his grandson. But when it comes down to it, that guy's not gonna take it lying down. The blue ants have mastered the art of transformation, but it's not easy for him. Without energy to replenish them, these ants will tear through his body. At this point, the blue ant suddenly senses a danger pheromone. The red ants are also reacting, and they're sure the pheromone is in the lab. But what they don't know is that the source of the danger is the dark and Shinzan. Mom is worried that Shinzan is in danger. So she dropped the doctor and rushed out. The blue ants saw this and followed closely behind. On the other side, several lab workers were thrown from the room. The culprits were none other than Shinzan and the being behind him. Security arrived and pulled the trigger on Shinzan without saying a word. The bullet didn't hurt them. And that move completely pissed off Shinzan. Under the protection of the ontology, Shinzan slowly raises his right hand, aimed at the security officer who had attacked him. Several golden energies came to the men in an instant. Under Shinzan's control, the two men's bodies floated into midair. Even Shinny in the distance sensed the dangerous energy. Mom finally arrived here a few minutes later. By now Shinzan has turned the security personnel into two insect beasts. Mom mistakenly thought they were going to do something bad to Shinzan. So she yelled at Shinzan to run. She wants to transform. But she can't control the red ants in her body because of her previous injuries. When Shinzan saw this, she completely had a showdown with her mother. Did you see that? That's what I can do. A power greater than any other. Recognize me. After talking, he takes control of the two insect beasts and charges right at his mom. The unsuspecting mother was pinned to the ground by them. No one expected. Shinzan would order insect beast to kill mom. My stupid son. Mom has always approved of you. At this time, mother has turned into a red ant. She kicks an insect beast in the head. Another insect beast's lower half was shattered by her punch. Then she came to Shinzan and wrapped him in her arms. My baby boy. Mommy shouldn't have hit you. It's mommy's fault. Actually Shinzan didn't want to hurt mom. He also seems to be under the mind control of something. The body behind him doesn't care. Straight out of the gate, he stabbed his mom through her body. Shinzan is completely flustered by this. Don't you dare hurt my mom. However, it seems that the main body didn't hear Shinzan's command. It's about to open its mouth and eat mom. But it's a good thing the blue ants got here in time. A punch sends the opponent flying. But it also managed to enrage the main body. Only to see him shoot several poisonous stings at the blue ants. The blue ant sees this and converges his energy into his hands. While getting rid of the stinger, he also beat the opponent into pieces. I don't know why. Shinzan's body has become much weaker. At that moment, Shinzan remembered his mother. Just as he knelt down beside his mom and cried, Grandpa arrived with a grim expression on his face. Shinzan looks like he's seen a lifeline. Grandpa, please save mom. But Grandpa responded with a cold bullet. You monster, stay away from my daughter. Shinzan couldn't believe that his grandfather would shoot him. A failure like you doesn't deserve to live. He pulled the trigger on Shinzan again. Luckily, Blue Ant was able to shield him from the bullet in time. You're a madman to do this to your own grandson. His existence is a threat to humanity. I order you to get out of my way. You think I'm going to follow your orders? Then don't blame me for being cruel. I'll get rid of you altogether. The Blue Ants are not happy about this. Try it if you can. What the hell happened to make an old man turn a gun on his grandson? Just a short time ago. Shinzan, imprisoned in the lab, completely blacked out. He used his powers to lift two guards into the air, turning them into inhuman insect beasts. Even made them kill their own moms. 
Mom took out two insect beasts by taking on the appearance of a red ant in excruciating pain. Then he took Shinzan in his arms and apologized. The power of a mother's love was exchanged for Shinzan's humanity. But in the end, Mom was stabbed through the chest by Shinzan's body. And this is not Shinzan. Just as Shinzan fell to his knees and cried, the doctor arrived with a grim look on his face. Without hesitation, he pulled the trigger on Shinzan. You monster, stay away from my daughter. And this act has caused Shinzan, who has just been replaced by his mother's humanity, to fall into the abyss once again. The blue ants on the side see this and rush to shield Shinzan in their arms. You're a madman to lay hands on your own grandson. And the doctor said, his existence is a threat to humanity. And order the blue ants to get out of the way. The blue ants don't believe in this crap. Then we'll just have to get rid of you altogether. The blue ants are not impressed. Try it if you can. One side is for the peace of mankind. The other side is for the protection of young children. Looks like you're not going to be a hero, are you? The blue ant thinks the opposite is true. What he's doing now is more heroic. At this point, Shinzan is already sweating cold sweat. The doctor puts his hand to his chest when he hears the blue ant's words. Then pulled a remote control out of it. When the blue ants saw this, they suddenly felt that something was wrong. In the blink of an eye, he disappeared. When he reappeared he was in front of the doctor. What do you want with this thing, you old fart? So the doctor's been wary of him since that incident. The blue ant thought he was just planting a bomb on himself. The doctor, however, stated that it was something much more terrifying. And with that he hit the switch. The blue ant turns around and yells for Shinzan to run, regardless of his own safety. Since Shinzan healed the blue ant's wound last time, a bond has been formed between the two of them. It was because of Shinzan's presence that the blue ant was able to transform. In the blue ant's eyes, Shinzan is his little hero. This is the first time Shinzan has been recognized. He was really happy. And now he's seeing his uncle in danger. How could Shinzan leave him alone? At that moment, a wave of discomfort washed over the blue ant's body. The moment he threw the doctor out. Those ants suddenly start to storm off. They're eating away at him. It turns out the doctor put a new queen inside him. The remote control was used to order an attack on the host. The ants won't stop until the host is dead. The bites of thousands of ants are making the uncle miserable. His armor begins to crumble a little. Purple blood is spewing from his body. Shinzan sees this and rushes to the uncle. Then he used his ability on the uncle, absorbing the ants that were tearing through him. Uncle is the only one who recognizes Shinzan. He doesn't want uncle to die like that. With Shinzan's continuous efforts, uncle is out of danger. But his appearance is slowly changing. When the smoke cleared, the doctor slowly opens his eyes. What comes into view is a supersized monster, and that's exactly what the blue ants look like now. At this point, Shinzan's heart has fallen into complete darkness. You two have become monsters after all. And Shinzan dismisses the doctor's point of view. Thinks they're just awakening. At this point, the monster looks at the doctor and hisses. Then he raised his sandbag-sized fist. Just as the doctor was about to detonate the bomb inside him, the red ants suddenly appeared in front of him and saved the doctor from a fatal blow. Meanwhile, mom keeps calling out Shinzan's name. Hope he comes to his senses. But obviously that didn't help. The monster has no intention of showing any mercy. Raising his sandbag-sized fist at his mom again. The other side. Shinny has also come to the lab to look for her mom. Though the corridor is shaking a lot. But the young one doesn't realize the danger. At this point the mom was punched against the wall by the monster. Looks incapacitated. Facing the monster that's slowly approaching. The doctor tells his daughter to get out of here first and he's going to detonate the bomb in his body to destroy everything here. Although Shinzan has lost his mind, but how can a mother leave her child alone? But in the end, a voice appeared and froze them in their tracks. When mom turns around she realizes, it turned out to be Shinny calling out from behind. Meanwhile Shinzan has found his brother. This is all because of you. Seeing Shinzan's face, mother yells for Shinny to run. She wants to take Shinny away, but her body fell to the ground. At this point, Shinzan is also giving orders to the monster. Let him disappear from my eyes. Just as the monster is about to move in to finish Shinny off, the doctor on the sidelines pulls the trigger on him. You must not be allowed to destroy the hopes of mankind. You're a good grandfather to me. In that case, then I will bring mankind to an end. The words just fell out of my mouth. The monster raises its hand 
and the doctor's body is split in two in an instant. The scene stunned the mother and son. Before he died, the doctor told his mother to keep Shani alive. After saying that he pressed the switch in his hand. Meanwhile the mother desperately lunged at Shani. She cupped Shani's little face and shed tears of dismay. Mom used her last strength to make the red ants in her body protect Shani. She herself is completely exposed to the blast. After the incident, Shinny kept calling out for her mother. But there was no response. He was supposed to be the blue ant who was going to be the hero of mankind. But under the doctor's control, he became an inhuman monster. He just flicked his arm. The doctor was split in two in an instant. But before he died, the doctor activated the bomb hidden inside him. Mom attached all her ants to Shinny's body to protect him. She was drowned in the explosion. A long time later, the outside of the lab was filled with firefighters. Grandma's been notified to come here. She couldn't have imagined that things would turn out the way they did. That's when a couple of firefighters came inside the lab. Survivors have been found. So it's Shinny who's been calling for her mom. Mom chose to sacrifice herself to protect him. Shinzon, though, is also affected. But his life is not in danger. Over the next few days, Grandma has been taking care of Shinny in the hospital and learned from the doctor's assistant what happened in the lab and also saw the relevant information in his hands. The grandmother who lost her daughter is in tears all day long. The other one she's worried about is Shinzon. Where has he been taken? According to the assistant's knowledge, Shinzon should be incarcerated in a secure underground lab, even though he's only five years old. But he's also an extremely dangerous being. Grandma blames herself when she hears this. If I had chosen to give up the sponsorship program, then the doctor wouldn't have created monsters in order to destroy them. A few days later grandma prepared a funeral for the doctor and the others. The original happy family became what it is now because of the experiment. Grandma, am I an orphan now? Silly boy, don't you still have a grandmother? From now on, you'll live with grandma. Back to the office. Grandma made an important decision. She left all the business to Secretary Kim. She had to raise Shani herself. And here Grandma finished telling what she knew. Because of the sheer volume of information, it will take a while for a few people to digest it. Captain Glasses also finally realizes where the monster that escaped the other day came from. But there's one thing he still doesn't understand. So where is Shinzon now? Hearing this Grandma's expression turns serious. Are you trying to destroy him? The two captains were so frightened by the appearance of grandma that they broke into cold sweats. Says it's not like that. But it's not a good idea to just let it go. It's just a matter of time before the human race dies. Grandma understands that. But what's the solution now? At this point Shinny on the other side of the room finally spoke up. Then let me get rid of him. Those words shocked everyone. Can you get rid of your own brother with your own hands? Shinny answered in the negative. But I can destroy his powers. Before this, Shinny had done experiments. Insect Beast was turned back into a human using ants inside his body. If the ants can eat the insect beast hidden inside Shinzon's body, it might be enough to destroy his powers. On the other side, outside the Reaper sector, and Huei and the Ladybug Beast are still bored waiting for Shinny. Obviously nothing happened. But both of them have a bad feeling about this. And it didn't take long. A mysterious figure suddenly appeared on an empty street. This scene is just watched by the two men in the car. This man's face is looking more and more familiar to them. At that moment, and Huei suddenly remembers something. Isn't this person the top six of the Skybug organization? Only to see the man make a million things like soap bubbles at the gate. The security guard on duty obviously doesn't realize the danger. How old is that guy over there to be playing with such childish things? The words just fell. The little guard is ready to touch the flying soap bubbles. But the moment the bubble breaks, a red light suddenly flashes. Then the guard was reduced to pieces. And Huei and Ladybug saw this and rushed towards the man. Why are you here? I hate it when people keep me from getting off work. You'd better mind your own business. Last episode it was said that one of the top six executives of the Skybug organization attacked the Reaper headquarters. And this scene just happened to be watched by An Huei and Ladybug Beast on the sidelines. The two of them rushed towards the man. At that moment, an ear-splitting alarm went off in the headquarters. The two long-haired captains got up in a hurry to check it out. The attacker was seen in the surveillance camera, but he was only one person. It's still just a non-insectoidal power user. And the Enhue who confronted him, they found out from Shinny that those two were his friends. There is no danger. 
but he has to go out and help. On his way out, he tells the glasses guy to get grandma out of here and he'll be right behind him. On the other side, the two Anhuis stood in the way of the intruders. How come it's just you two? Isn't there a black ant? Is it time to think about joining our Skybug organization? What the hell is this Skybug organization? Why are you guys running around here? Do we need a reason to do what we do? But I'm here to retrieve our lost arm. And to confirm the existence of a certain someone. And Hue both are a little confused. Who would be the person he was talking about? More importantly, the remaining five masters will also be attacking the Reaper sector in the near future. And Hue is shocked by this. Are you suggesting that the Skyworm organization is going to declare all-out war on humanity? Things are getting interesting all of a sudden. You know I hate working overtime. That's why it bothers me when I see all these ants out there making trouble. After that he gave a big wave of his hand. Countless bubbles flew towards the Reaper personnel who went out to meet them. And Huey sees this and rushes to block the bubbles in front of him. The ladybug beast then rushes toward the intruder. On the way, he discovers tiny bombs hidden in the bubbles. And he rushes to warn and Huey to be careful. And Huey learns that his body is spinning in the air. She's trying to blow the bubble aside. But it did set off the bomb in the bubble. Luckily, and Huey reacted in time to get out of the way of the explosion. The Reaper team members aren't so lucky. If you do not choose to submit to the Skyworm organization, then you'll have to die like the rest of them. And yet, before he could finish his sentence, and Huey and the Ladybug Beast charged towards each other. But soon the two realized something was wrong, because their attacks were all blocked by a layer of bubbles. Seeing this, the two of them no longer entangled, and hurriedly retreated backward. And men have completely started to insectize. This is my defense bubble. You won't be able to break through. And Huey is not impressed. She was about to charge forward but was stopped by the ladybug beast. I'll take it from here. But before he could finish his sentence, the enemy was in front of him in the blink of an eye. Do you deserve to be my opponent? How can the ladybug bear such an insult? He swings his fist directly at his opponent. But it only hit the air. At that moment the man appeared behind the ladybug beast like a ghost. I'm a different kind of person. Are you surprised you can't feel my pheromones? After that, he kicked Ladybug in the face. This kick sent him flying several meters away. And Huey on the side was also secretly shocked. She can't see the enemy's movements at all. It's a lopsided situation. His proud fists can't even touch his opponent. Finally got a hit. But this is still a flaw deliberately exposed by the enemy. Because he knows the Ladybugs can't break his bubble. And then a roundhouse kick sends him flying again. You know why you guys are so weak? It's because you can't get out of your current form. I knew you were a ladybug right away. And your friend is a silk moth. But can you tell what kind of bug I am? Call me Bubbles if you can't tell. At this point, the ladybug is half on its knees and has lost the ability to fight again. Bubble Man doesn't bother with him anymore. He just disappears into thin air. His target is none other than Inhue, who is watching the battle from the sidelines. Actually, the one thing I'm really proud of is my speed. After saying that, he raised his leg and kicked it towards Anhue. This heavy kick went straight to Anhue's body. Anhue's body falls like a cannonball. Ladybug Beast slams his fist into the ground helplessly. He's always challenged the strongest to break through. Instead of getting stronger, he became a clown. The world championship is a joke. All because of these heavy and obstructive bodies. It's not really my style. After saying that the ladybug beast actually tore up his armor in a hard way. At this point, the bubble man also slowly fell to the ground. And Hue is also unconscious. The bubble man comes to her and tries to destroy her. This directly stomped a huge crater in the ground. But he didn't crush in Hue into a meat pie. Not waiting for Bubbles guy to react. Two little ladybugs attacked him. What's this again? Are you going to continue to struggle? It turns out the ladybugs saved in Hue just in time. He carefully lowers Inhue to the ground. He then suddenly appeared in front of the Bubble Man at an alarming speed. At that moment, Bubble Man also detected a hint of danger from his opponent. I hear you pride yourself on your speed. Then let's compare whose fists are faster. He is Bubbles, one of the six masters of the Skybug organization. Even Inhue and Ladybug are no match for him. Just one turn. Inhue was knocked unconscious. Ladybug Beast also lost the ability to fight again. He slams his fist into the ground in anger. He's always challenged the strongest to break through. But in the end, instead of getting stronger, he became a clown. 
At that moment, he remembered the conversation he had with Hannah. Is it true that that little bug you developed can make people stronger? Hannah answers in the affirmative. After saying that she wants the ladybug beast to taste it. But the ladybug beast refused decisively. Because he wants to be strong on his own. But Hannah says it won't be easy. But as a friend, she's very supportive of the ladybug beasts. Because the larvae are only temporarily providing a power drug. When your thirst for power reaches its limit, you will metamorphose. This is the second awakening. At this time, Ladybugman just reached the critical value. He rips off his armor, successfully awakening his second form. At that moment, Bubbles sensed a hint of danger. But no matter what you become, I will tear you apart with my own hands. With that he charged at the Ladybug beast. And Ladybugman is also eager to give it a try. Not only did he feel his body became much lighter, but also there is even inexhaustible power. Soon the two were fighting. At that moment, and Hue slowly woke up. When she opened her eyes, she was stunned by the scene in front of her eyes. Only a red and a blue ball of light kept colliding in the air. The red ball of light is the fast-moving ladybug. He can now easily keep up with Bubble Man's speed. Bubble Man throws a powerful kick in anger. But the blow is easily blocked by the little ladybug. Ladybug Beast sees the moment and raises his fist at Bubbles Guy. The punch hits Bubble Man's face with pinpoint accuracy, knocking him out of the air and into the ground. Bubble Man's legs are on the trunk of a tree. His body rushes towards the ladybug again like a cannonball. But halfway there, he suddenly loses his target. It turned out that the ladybug beast came behind him at a much faster speed. The ladybug beast slams Bubble Man into the ground with a straight punch. After a long time Bubble Man finally flew through the smoke. He never expected. The ladybug has become so powerful after just one evolution. In that case, then let's try my best trick. After saying that, his leg transformed into countless shadows and kicked at the ladybug beast. However, the ladybug didn't give a damn about his opponent. All of his attacks are blocked by the little ladybug. Bubble Man is clearly upset. Attack Ladybugman again. But the ladybug takes his punch with ease and says that his attack is not worth dodging at all. I'll show you what real boxing is all about. The words just fell. The ladybug beast swung its fist and charged at its opponent. The punch landed precisely on Bubble Man's midsection, and it went right through his chest. Bubble Man couldn't hold out any longer. A mouthful of blood was spat out. That's what you get for beating up my friend. Now you can go to hell. Bubble Man is completely flabbergasted. It's obviously too late to beg for mercy. With a violent explosion, the ladybug beast returns to its human form. And Hue, on the other side of the room, is also incredibly shocked. This guy actually took out the top brass of the Sky Bug organization. At that moment, a figure arrived in front of Anhui, turning back to find. So it was Shinny who came here. What took you so long? The ladybug took out the enemy a long time ago. But at that moment Shinny suddenly showed a serious look on his face. And Hue also sensed something was wrong. What is this horrible feeling of oppression all about? It's like being surrounded by enemies. The ladybugs, not yet aware of the anomaly, turn around. See that? Black Ant, I'm winning this battle. But before he could finish his sentence, there's a sudden stab of pain behind him, waiting for Ladybug Beast to turn around to realize, it's Hannah who hasn't been here for a while. It's been a long time, my friend. Congratulations on completing your second awakening. I don't know if you remember Kong Dajuan from Club 6. If Shinny hadn't come along in the first place, Kong Dajuan could have been one of the top brass in the Skybug organization. But the real terror in Club 6 is Hannah. She developed a larva that not only strengthens itself, ordinary people can be transformed into insect beasts. Those who are gifted can even have a second awakening. It was not long ago that the ladybug awakened to his second form. Even the top brass of the skybug organization was punched through his chest. Looking at Shinny, who was walking slowly towards him, the ladybug beast would have liked to show off. But there's a sudden stabbing pain behind him. He turns around and realizes it's Hannah, who he hasn't seen in a long time. Whether it's strength or heart, this girl is definitely not simple. The ladybugs have just been through a terrible battle, and with Hannah's poison needles, the ladybug can't hold out much longer. It slowly collapses to the ground. I'm so sorry, my friend. It's what I have to do to be recognized for my research. The research Hannah is talking about is these mutated insect beasts behind her. And Hue is shocked to see this. 
There are so many members of the Skybug organization. But Shinny, on the sidelines, dismisses her thoughts. He has a feeling that these are the same larvae that he encountered at the club. Only these ones in front of him seem to have evolved twice. As we speak, two shells suddenly explode in the swarm. Turns out it was a Reaper team member that attacked them. The leader was a hedgehog under Captain Longhair. Hedgehog has called for support from the other squads. But their situation is basically the same as here. They've all been attacked by the Skybugs. Until the captain returns it's up to Hedgehog and Beige to hold off the enemy as long as they can. At this point Hedgehog suddenly points in Shinny's direction and yells. The three people in front of us are friendlies. Our mission is to defend the base as best we can. The words just fell. The team rushes towards the enemy with weapons in hand. And Huey sees this and feels bad. Let's get out of here. We'll leave this to the Reaper division. Now is not the time to go. My grandmother hasn't been safely evacuated. At this point, Captain Longhair is taking Grandma and Secretary Kim out of here through the secret passage. Name is also following a staff member who is preparing to leave the headquarters. In that case, we're going to take on those guys together, too, right? It's too late to think about it. Those insect beasts are already swooping down on them. And Huey immediately used her silk threads. It stops most of the insect beasts. Only a few of them made it out. The first moment they hit the ground, they rushed toward Inhue. Shinny sees this and raises her arm in a hurry. Summoning an ant doppelganger to protect Inhue. Shinny then lets out a loud cry and raises his arm high in the air again. The ants instantly turned into black snakes and swallowed several insect beasts. The battle is raging at this point. It was as if the enemy couldn't be killed enough. On the other side, Name is still following the staff. But when they passed a corner. She realized that the evacuees were going in the opposite direction. Without waiting for Name to make an inquiry, the staff member opens the door in front of him. This scene was just caught in the eye of Chinjan, who was evacuating. Name is puzzled. Why did you bring me to this place? This is where the arm of the black monster was stored. Saw someone come in. The two staff members were a little shocked. Not waiting for the two to make a warning, they lose consciousness. And it was the woman in front of Name who did it. The woman's face slowly changes and she says into her headset, I've got the arm. Name had frozen in place in fear. On the other side, Hannah, who had received the message, was satisfied. So they came here to get the monster arm. At the same time, a luxury automobile pulled out of the headquarters tunnel. The people in the car thought they could get out of here without realizing it. They didn't know that Hannah was watching them. This time she'll be recognized by the top brass. At this point, Name covers her mouth in disbelief at the sight of her opponent's true face. Because the insect beast in front of her was her best friend, Shurjan. It's been a long time. My friend. How are you doing? The girl was just a normal mutant insect beast. But now she's had a second evolution. Just now. She broke into the room where the Reaper division keeps the monster's arm. Used her powers to mesmerize two researchers. And revealed his true form. Name is shocked to see this. Isn't that her best friend, Shurjan? Shurjan flies over to Name and lifts her chin. I didn't expect to meet you here either. Come with me. Name, on the other hand, is confused. How did you become like this? How's that? Isn't it pretty? I'm a very rare individual amongst all the larvae. So I can get stronger. Come with me. I'll protect you from now on. She is obviously her best friend. But Name thinks she is strange. Shurjan also notices an unusual expression on her friend's face. What's wrong with you? Is that a no? And yet, just then, a Derek flew their way. Shurjan leaps high to avoid the attack. The iron frame just shattered the container that held the arm behind it. Name was thrown hard to the ground, looking at the destroyed container. Shurjan knows that the visitor is not a simple man. This is Chinjan, who has returned. You little worm, how dare you come in here? Shurjan feels insulted. I just want to test my current strength with you, and with that, she flapped her wings. A strong hurricane heads toward Shinjan, though the last fight cost him an arm. But this attack will do nothing for him, and it's an effective counterattack. Shurjan's body erupts in a trail of blood. Shinjan seizes the opportunity and reaches back to utilize his lightning ability to bind him. Then he prepares to deliver the final blow. And then, just then, Name suddenly rushed out to stop Shinjan. That's my best friend. Please don't hurt her anymore. After saying that she yells at Shurjan, hurry up and go. Shurjan was heartbroken to see Name get hurt, but she followed Name's advice. 
Leaving this place, she also managed to take the monster arm. After seeing Shurjin safe, Name couldn't hold on any longer and passed out. Shurjin has also managed to fly out of Reaper HQ. On the other side the squad members are still in a fierce battle with the insect beast army. There are too many insect beasts on the other side of the battlefield. Team members are getting hurt all the time. The hedgehog has stepped up in time to save one teammate after another. Though these insect beasts aren't very strong in front of him. But to his horror, he realized. These insect beasts can get back up no matter how much damage they've taken. They can keep fighting even if they're shot in the head by a bagger. Until Shinny does. The insect beasts surrounding the hedgehog were immediately incapacitated. From Shinny's mouth. The weakness of these insect beasts is the larvae that hide in their throats. These larvae are good sustenance for the black ants inside him. However, and Hue on the side will soon be unable to hold on. Even if we find a way to destroy the insect beast. So what to do with so many more? These guys right now are already making people confused. If it wasn't for the protection of Shinny's doppelganger, I fear the ladybug beast would have become a ration long ago. Shinny suddenly looks nervous. It turns out that Inhue has used up his last ounce of strength. An endless number of insect beasts have broken out of the net. Just as these insect beasts are about to join the fray. Suddenly, they were pierced by a dense thread of silk. Countless insect beasts have been frozen in midair again. It turns out that Inhue has awakened her second form as well. The other side. Grandma led the crowd to the entrance of a neighborhood. The residents all greeted Grandma warmly. Thank you all for your hard work during this time. You guys get to leave work early today. It turns out these people are all actors hired by Grandma to play the residents. The purpose is to convince outsiders that this is an ordinary neighborhood. Grandma then led the group to an empty square. Then she and Secretary Kim took out a medal and set it in the square. Next, the plaza reveals a passageway to the underground. Come on, I'll show you down. The prisoners down there seem to have sensed that someone is coming. Looks like this place is about to get a lot busier. The girl thought she was just an ordinary insect beast. Unbeknownst to her, she's a very rare individual amongst all the other larvae, so she can get stronger. Just a short time ago Shurjin snatched the monster's arm from the reaper sector. Soon she took the arm with her to a mysterious cave. The cave is filled with feeding insect beasts. When she looks up and sees the man sitting on the throne, she can't help but look nervous. This man is the same blue monster that escaped from the reaper sector not too long ago. Shurjin was seen very respectfully dropping to one knee and offering the arm of the looted monster. Honorable Master, I brought your arm back safe and sound. When the monster came to Shurjin, the arm in Shurjin's hand turns into countless blue particles back to the monster. Instead of thanking Shurjin, the monster, who had regained his strength, put his arm on her head. Shurjin was in a cold sweat. But luckily the monster didn't hurt her. Instead, it hits the stone wall behind Shurjin with energy. The insect beast on the other side of the room also lets out a piercing scream at Shurjin. With the blue monster's permission. They won't hesitate to tear Shurjin to pieces. You better not think about betraying me, or you'll end up in deep shit. Such a powerful aura makes it hard for Shurjin to breathe. The other side. Grandma leads the group to a secret underground passageway. From Grandma, they learned that this is where the castle project used to take place. Now she invested and turned it into a community. It's also where she and Shinny live. It's also where Shinzon is being held. Soon several people arrived at the elevator. Grandma took the two squad leaders to the elevator and continued down. Secretary Kim is going to wait here for Shinny. As the elevator doors are opened again, a mysterious man appeared in front of the crowd. This man is Dr. Kim's assistant and a survivor of the disaster. Then Grandma explained to him the purpose of coming here. The assistant listened and took the men to a secret room. It is her other grandson Shinzon who is imprisoned here. Regarding this grandson, Grandma always thought that she owed him something. But for the safety of humanity, she must keep Shinzon in captivity. On the other side of the battlefield, and Hue has finally awakened his second form as well. The originally troublesome insect beast is finally under control. And Hue controls the silk thread and stabs it into insect beast's throat. It pulls out all the larvae that are hidden inside. Then Shinny sends out his doppelganger to eat them all. A few seconds pass. Shinny raises her arms and yells fusion. The doppelganger was ordered to return to Shinny in an instant, but due to absorbing too many larvae. And for a while, it's causing Shinny a lot of pain. Subconsciously, he seemed to see the red ant again. 
and his body slowly started to turn red. Anhui, on the other side, notices something wrong with Shinny. But before she could say anything, Shinny suddenly told him to follow him. Without waiting for Anhui to react, Shinny leaps into the air. Anhui saw this and followed closely with Ladybugman. Finally the battle is over, and the squad members breathe a sigh of relief. At that moment, Bug, who was on the sidelines, noticed the unthinkable. The insect beast corpses lying on the ground had changed back to human form. The other side. Grandma looks through the glass at her grandson inside. Shinzan, who has not seen her grandma for a long time, expressed that she misses her very much. What took you so long? At this time, Shinzan also spots the two captains behind the grandmother. The guests are surprisingly armed. Are you here to kill me? Grandma panicked a bit when she heard Shinzan's words. It's not like that, Shinzan. They're all employees of my company. How can a grandmother lay hands on her own grandson? But grandma's explanation Shinzan clearly doesn't believe. So what is the purpose of your visit here? We are waiting for Shinny here. He said he might be able to cure you. Shinzan freezes for a few seconds at first after hearing this. Then he began to scoff loudly and uncontrollably. Are you, an old woman, an old fool? Just what can a guy with ants in his body do? I've been locked up here for eleven whole years. Even if he could cure me, I refuse. Just as grandma is about to persuade Shinzan again. Suddenly there was a violent explosion behind him. The two captains felt something was wrong. Turning back to find. A blue monster throws Secretary Kim to the ground and slowly walks towards them. The two men see this and rush to shield their grandmother behind them. But the monster doesn't pay any attention to them. Instead, it looks behind them to Shinzan. Shinzan also looks at the monster in front of him and finds it particularly familiar. You're my hero. I'm gonna get you out of here. With that, the monster is in combat mode. The two captains didn't flinch either. The purple-haired captain guards grandmother. The long-haired man then rushes toward the monster. However, the monster simply waved its arm gently. The powerful energy came to the long-haired man in an instant. After a violent explosion, the long-haired man has been seriously injured, even affecting the two men behind him. The purple-haired captain keeps calling out for grandmother. It turns out that grandma was blown out of her mind. The boy was held underground for 12 whole years, because he grew up with a dark heart, and he has a terrible power. Not only can he turn ordinary humans into the terrifying insect beast, he can also absorb the power of others and use it for himself. Twelve years later, Grandma came to visit this grandson with two of her men. Instead, they were attacked by a monster. It was the same blue monster that escaped from the Reaper sector, though there are two Reaper captains here to hold the fort. Grandma was still caught in the crossfire of the battle and was seriously injured and unconscious. On the other side, Shinny's body is glowing red and he's speeding there. He has a very bad feeling about this. He senses a force stronger than ever at his grandmother's location. He must get to where Shinzan is being held before something happens to grandma. But things are not looking good here. As the purple-haired captain called out to her, she gradually regained some consciousness. On the other side, the blue monster punched the long-haired captain and sent him flying. The sheer force of it made him lose his center of gravity. The blue monster doesn't intend to leave him alone. Once again, it rushes forward with its fists raised. But what he didn't expect was, he misses with that punch. It turns out the blue monster was targeting Shinzan behind him. The punch cracks the room where Shinzan is trapped. A pair of robotic arms suddenly extend from behind the monster and grab him in a death grip. It turns out that Dr. Kim's assistant has arrived in a mech. The purple-haired captain saw the right moment to raise his lightning-charged fist and rush at the monster with the long-haired man. The combined blows of the two clearly dealt a heavy blow to the monster. They finally have a moment of respite. The assistant doesn't let the two continue to fight. Instead, hoping they can protect the rep and secretary Kim out of here. I'll take care of the rest. Please ensure the safety of the delegate. The purple-haired captain also stopped talking picked up the agent and the long-haired man and left the area. The blue monster's body is firmly bound and cannot be pursued. It can only watch them go. The assistant is still worried about Shinzan's safety inside. At this point he doesn't realize that these monsters are actually working with Shinzan. Seeing that Shinzan is not in danger in the safe house. Then he stopped worrying. Prepare to press the button that will destroy everything in this place. However, his arm stopped in mid-air without control. It turns out that Hannah, who had been invisible, had stopped him. Shinzan, who was bound to his seat, also slowly stood up. Again, this is Hannah's doing. 
Now there's no one to stop me. At this point, the assistant also finally realized. The guys who attacked this place were all Shinzon's men. Shinzon doesn't want to talk shit to the people holding him either. Unleashing a terrible energy at him, Hannah sees this and jumps aside in a hurry. Hannah sees the assistant's body emit a bright golden light. Soon he was transformed into an ugly insect beast. It was also the first time that Hannah saw the true power of creating the insect beast. Afterwards, Shinzon comes to the blue monster. It's been a really hard time for you, uncle. The other side. The two captains have escaped to the exit with the two wounded. The purple-haired captain hopes the long-haired man can lead them away. Just in case. She's going to stay behind. But before they could finish their sentence, Hannah flew out with her assistant who had just turned into insect beast. Also appearing are the blue monster and Shinzon. At this point, the two have realized. It's obviously too late to leave. Shinzon is also walking towards them while pretending to be concerned about his grandmother's injuries. He then suddenly used his ability on a few people. Even if you die, you have to give me a chance to take revenge. The two captains saw this and rushed to the side. The energy landed right on top of a pigeon. Just a moment. And that pigeon became the terrifying insect beast. Without waiting for the two to react. The insect beast rushed towards them. The insect beast's sharp wings managed to scratch them both. The purple-haired captain's center of gravity is unsteady and he accidentally throws his grandmother out of the way. The insect beast sees the moment and charges at grandma with its bloody mouth open. But Shinny was there in time. Stomped on insect beast's head. Look at the unconscious grandmother on the ground. Shinny handed her over to the two captains and told them to take her to the hospital. Shinny prepares to stay on her own. His thoughts are now on killing Shinzon. But if he wants to kill Shinzon, he must first deal with this blue monster. The monster also saw Shinny's thoughts and took the lead in the attack. Shinny punches the monster in the face with a lot of hate. However, the monster dodges all of his next attacks. The monster raises its arm as it sees Shinny's opening. The monster then sends out a blast of air at Shinny. Shinny's body could only keep retreating. A powerful blade of ki destroys a building directly behind it. Shinny spins around the monster with his speed. Then Shinny suddenly accelerates, aiming his knee at the monster's head. But it's like the monster saw right through him. He grabs Shinny's neck with his backhand. Then he drives his knee into Shinny's abdomen. Shinny's body flies backward uncontrollably from the blow. The force of the impact crashes through several buildings behind him. The blue monster doesn't intend to leave Shinny alone. He dodges in front of Shinny. A heavy punch sends Shinny straight to the ground. It's not just red ants that can be heroes. I can be a hero, too. After saying that the monster split Shinny in half with a big swing, but in fact, it was only one of Shinny's doppelgangers. The real Shinny was already behind him. Shinny gazes at the monster in front of him as if he's looking at a dead man. As the monster turns to counterattack, Shinny stabs him in the gut. The ants that turned into blades took the opportunity to all enter the monster's belly. Shinny shouts frantically, eat him. Soon the monster was eaten and its true body was exposed. What Shinny didn't expect was, the monster's body is the corpse of the uncle. Just by looking at him, you can tell the monster was already a dead man before he fought Shinny. At this moment, the lifeless monster raised its arm towards Shinny again. Shinzan suddenly came in front of Shinny and stopped the monster's attack. Uncle will always be my hero. Thank you for your hard work during this time. Now you can rest. After saying that Shinzan inhaled the uncle into his body. Shinny on the side was full of shock and asked him what the hell was going on. Learn from Shinzan. Uncle's been dead since the lab explosion. After that, uncle is Shinzan's doppelganger, so to speak. Now you can die in peace. With that, he stabbed the blade into Shinny. You steal the show in the outside world. Do you know what I've been through all these years? Now it's my turn. I want to taste the power of my mother. Then he reached down and choked Shinny. He then used his powers to absorb all the ants in Shinny's body. On the other hand, Anhui is still searching for Shinny. At this moment, there is a sudden blinding light from below. And then there was a violent explosion. I don't know how long it took. Shinny slowly opened her eyes. You finally woke up. It was then that Shinny realized he was in a hospital. What about grandma? I'm so sorry. The agent disappeared after the explosion that day. There's one more piece of bad news. The insect beasts around the world have been getting very aggressive lately. The current reaper division is no match for them. Shinny doesn't care. All he wants now is to get his grandmother back. But he can't feel a single ant's power right now. 
he has no choice but to ask the long-haired man for help, hoping to gain access to the Reaper Division's insect genes. This surprised both of them. I'll do anything to save Grandma. But has Shinny really lost his power? Even Shinny himself hadn't noticed that there was a vicious ant inside of him glowing red. And that concludes the first season of Black Ant. Let's look forward to the second season.